Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Roll For It, your favorite YouTube and streamers get together to play some lovely tabletop RPGs. Of course, today we are playing Vampire the Masquerade, fifth edition, our second uh, season of it. Some I was going to say, it's like our mid, it's like a, we can call this like the mid-season finale since we've got two-week break after this. <clears throat> oh, yeah, we do, we do, in yep. fact, have a two-week break after this because, unfortunately, Mathis is running away. So. I have uh, something I cannot avoid next week, and then my birthday the week after that, and I'm going to go you. enjoy my Woo. birthday. Do you have a literally going nowhere in quarantine? But maybe <laughs> I'm gonna go see my my sister and my mom. I think that's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be thirty four. Are, are you fleeing because you're blood hunted? Is that grandpa? Is that why? <laughs> Not yet. Nobody knows I'm like the prince of a city yet or anything. I would be a terrible prince. Are you kidding me? I mean. You're kind what would, of a what would you do now? Not really, though, right? Like, You're Bella. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I created Bella. <laughs> no, you That's pull true. Bella's strings, so you're the Methuselah. That's more, I'm closer to the Methuselah than I am <laughs> Bella. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're the prince of my heart, man. Aw. Aw. <laughs> Somebody has to be, I guess. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, this is being beckoned. Yeah, I'm being called by the beckoning. <laughs> Fuck. The beckoning, the beckoning is just, of 34. The beckoning of 34. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being beckoned to middle age. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. Can't stop it. Uh, okay. Can't stop, won't stop. Nope. So, announcements and stuff. Uh, busy week. So, apparently, there's a lot of announcements this week. I haven't noticed I've been too busy. Uh, we've got no support today. Uh, the monthly recap is out on Patreon if people at the appropriate tier want to go check that out. Uh, Apocalypse World Dawn of the Others starts tomorrow, and uh, we have a badass trailer for that. In fact, you know, I think the trailer's badass enough, and since it starts tomorrow, I'm actually going to go grab that trailer and play it to all you at home right now, because I think it is worth it. Let me go grab that real quick. This, this isn't on the, on the docket for me to do, so I just thought I'd do no. it. I mean, that's totally fine. You know, something I thought I found very interesting, and actually something I didn't know about VTM lore while you look for that, I think okay. Dot would enjoy this. Do you know who the prince of Milwaukee is? No. He's a gang girl. He's a gang girl. Is it really a gang girl? Yeah. But, he's, but he's like a he's like a mega devout Camarilla loyalist. Wow. Which is super weird for a gang for girl. For a gang girl, yeah. And I'm... by his orders, a Justicar was killed <laughs> and when he was prince. So like, wow. he's, a, he's like a no nonsense, go fuck yourself kind of. Uh... I want to find out more about that now. Like I remember Mark it was Decker. a gang girl. It's he's like got a the fucking only cool one. name too. Mark Decker, he is a ninth gen. Cool. I need to find out more about that. I know that the, uh, is really it happy. Cairo is a caitiff? It's, it's, an, it's an Egyptian city is a caitiff in charge. When you leave the U.S., it gets a little bit more common to have the, the less core uh, clans, clans leading. Um, yeah, once it's like U.S., like it's the core clans are hyper-focused and in, in Europe a little bit, but. Yeah, Edinburgh, I think it's Edinburgh is a Giovanni. Because like once you get into like the like East Asia, and and that area where you start dealing with kindred that are more kindred of the spirit instead of kindred of the blood, the Kuei Jin and shit. The Kuei Jin, the, yeah. The, the, the people that are are like they're they're quote unquote vampires, but they're they, completely they, different type of vampire. I, like completely, it, they, they yeah, deal with like they yeah. they drain your spirit and your soul, yeah. and they like properly die first before they come back. And it's it's a whole it's, it's like it goes another layer, dude. It's it's wild. Yeah. Anyway, enjoy the trailer for Dawn of the Others. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why is it not playing the audio? That makes me sad. It's not playing any audio for it.
<laughs> that was a rapist. perfectly normal trailer. <laughs> Everyone's very straight faced after that. Nothing <laughs> happened. It's all right. I cleared it. So, yep. I don't have that sound effect anymore. Oh, okay. I should have clipped it. I should have. <laughs> it was a. <laughs> it was uh, a bit of a. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's Donny. Yeah, that starts tomorrow. Uh, Maggie's GMing. We've got uh, an amazing cast of uh, Nika Harper, <laughs> Edriosa, um, Kira Nancy, and Bentham. Apparently, Bentham's you know fine. That's great. That's um, a good cast. I mean, I haven't played with Nika in a while, but I pl I played Vampire with Nika before. She's really, fantastic. I love playing with Nika. I also yeah. visited her island on Animal Crossing the she other was, day, uh, and it's beautiful. She played in Nosferatu. <laughs> oh, oh really? wow! Yeah, I can see Nika doing that. Oh, uh, she was great. So that that'll be starting tomorrow. We're going for twelve weeks, so uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that. Uh, we also have uh, final sheets and GM notes for River Valley High coming soon. So if you want to find out about Monster Heartsy drama stuff behind the scenes, they'll be coming out soon. And we have an announcement that while Maps is away, we're going to be doing a two shot uh, with a completely new setup, and that will be GM'd by Trooper. And Trooper will be GMing. The Captain's Table, a Good Society RPG two-shot. So those of you who don't know what Good Society is, it, it is a, a nice little indie game uh, where it's dark to the system and it's set during this kind of um, Jane Austen type era. Uh, so you play um, society people trying to do a kind of society thing where you try and, I don't know, like get together, you try and get your matches, etc. It's basically like it's the RP version of a Jane Austen novel. So, oh my gosh, that sounds great. Trooper it's was <laughs> that's that's amazing. fantastic GM. He's GMing another historical campaign I'm doing right now, and he's amazing historical GM. Yep. Get, I, I'm pumped for that. I was honestly <laughs> like, look, around. we should play Good Society because I have the book on my shelf yes. for the last year, and I haven't opened it, so I finally got to open the cellophane. Good, like, new book smell. It's great. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Love, love me some Trooper. Uh, and then there'll be uh, the announcement of the cast will be tomorrow. Um, I have something that I'm waiting on being able to talk about until that happens, but there'll be a cast announced tomorrow for that uh, on Dawn and the Others. So with that said, I believe that's all of the announcements. There's quite a few of them. This week has been a little insane. Um, mm -hmm. I also want to point out that the logo for Dawn and the Others is uh, I think it's one of my best. Uh, right. Okay. That said, you can support us on Patreon, uh, on Twitch, on Bits and Tips, and YouTube if you want to be a YouTube member. Um, Spanish Inquisition, they're subscribing. Thank you very much for demonstrating that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you can tell people about the show. That's, like, one of the best ways is just being able to tell people about the show, spread the word, you know, retweet the thing. Um, it's a really good way to do that. Uh, I should probably retweet the thing. Let me just go do that as a demonstration, not that I forgot at all. There we go. This is, this is how you do it. You, you retweet the thing, and there we go. Great. Um, and it's really, really helpful. Uh, it's really nice to be able to get all that support and so on. It's really nice to be able to pay our cast and do things like that. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, apparently, I missed an obvious joke. Bentham, what? I missed an obvious joke? Sorry. I, I feel like I've let you down. Uh, with that said, hi, welcome to World of Darkness. World of Darkness by default is a dark and uh, emotionally draining world. And we tried what to... What the hell you're talking about, homie? It's so yeah, happy. No, I'm just... Yeah. Mm -hmm, so happy. Here we live the lives of the best vampires. It's basically Cheers and Vampire. Form. If we're the best vampires, is, I hate exactly the worst vampires. It is exactly like Cheers. Just cheers. Everybody knows Ollie's your, bar, the door flies the open, the jingle yeah. starts. Where everybody it's a, it, wants your bar. <laughs> it's super happy, and then like it's got that whole cheers theme going, then Crowley walks in, it's just and everybody just watches, just like ah oh, fuck. And then Ozzy plays on the radio. I hear not it. My fault I'm such an obvious predator. <laughs> <sighs> not my Everywhere. fault the character creation gave it to me twice, despite the fact you're not meant to be able to. Well, gang, it's going to be one of those Saturdays. <sighs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so bear in mind that that one, uh, we're, we're playing characters who are oftentimes by default are bad. Uh, we are bad people that do bad things because we're vampires. There's no way for that to really be good in World of Darkness. So please bear in mind that our characters will often do dodgy stuff. Uh, because of that, feel free to hate characters, but not players. Players are playing a role. They're playing their character, so don't really hate the players, but feel free to hate the characters themselves. Uh, that's totally allowed. Uh, and secondly, uh, we're going to be doing stuff that might be problematic because, hey, vampires, if we're not doing problematic stuff, then um, it's maybe not World of Darkness uh, because that's how World of Darkness rolls. It's not a it's not a nice world. 
bearing that in mind, uh, if something is problematic for you, feel free to take a break. Uh, you go make a cup of tea, mute the stream for a bit, or skip an episode if you need to. You don't need to, like, hurt yourself on our account. So with that said and done, um, handing it over to the most problematic person of the all, math is take it away. You really want to say that when you know who, where we're open in this Yeah, game? yeah, I do. I forgot that was a thing. Yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried now. We actually uh, open up our establishing shot at ground level in the park, just off the sidewalk, where a dead sidewalk light doesn't bright up or light up the, the area. And instead, the only ray you can even see what's before you is by the moonlight that is able to escape between the clouds. Across the walkway, a, a small dilapidated church sits before you, and we can see the silhouette of Crowley taking his final steps up the stairs and past the doors that kind of hang on their hinges, just ever so barely closed. Might, much like last time, Crowley, as you press, uh, push the door open, it creaks a little bit, echoes throughout, and as you look around, most people wouldn't see the single figure sitting in a pew halfway up the left side row, staring forward. But you do. Crowley pretends he doesn't see him. He doesn't want to burst his bubble. He's obviously <laughs> got a thing going on. Uh, he's going to walk forwards up the center aisle until he gets near to, like, the altar. And he's just going to look up at it. Do you, uh, do you basically, yeah, I was going to say, do you kind of, like, make it obvious where you're waiting and, and seeing if he's going to Oh, he's standing there anything? totally in the center, really obvious. Sure, sure. It doesn't take long after you've sat up there, before you even say any words, and as you're looking at the altar that you do hear <clears throat> a very obvious one. Uh, yeah, your church is haunted. <laughs> you hear him, him give a very light, light chuckle from behind you. As you turn around and you, you maybe you look over your shoulder, perhaps, he hasn't moved from the middle pew, but as far as you can tell, he's dropped uh, the, the, the gift, the discipline that allows him to hide himself from mortal eyes and otherwise. I didn't think I was going to see you here again, but, uh, good to see you, Crowley. Yeah. Uh. At this point, Crowley does, like, turn around. He looks yeah. actually slightly nervous. Um, he just, like, glances around a bit. Is this place, uh, you know, um, no one was listening? He, he actually looks a little confused. I was listening. I mean, other than you. No, nobody. At least not that I'm aware. Right, well, uh, Camarilla aren't too fond of this, but yeah, your place is haunted. <sighs> he gives, um... His, his jaw goes slack a little bit, and, and he stands. Oh, dude, what the hell do you mean? So, uh... Ghosts, they're a thing. Okay. Uh, how would you know that my place is haunted? Uh, they talk to me. What are they saying? They're just kind of the other side of the barrier where I can't exactly tell, but they're very noisy here. Your church kind of lives on this strange, uh... It's very thin. It, the wall between where they live and us here, really thin. You think it's because it's uh, like a a church thing? No, nah, that normally works the other way. Oh. Huh. It's, is that why you? It is a. Uh, is that why you and your coterie keep coming back, or or showed up the first time, rather? No, actually, I showed up the first time because I was looking for the Baron. Right, right. And I keep coming back because, you know, you look like you're in a tough spot. This time, yeah, I come back because it's haunted. Are and you going to, like, perform an exorcism or something? I'm not even sure if that can be done. But I'm actually here because it is haunted this time. Uh, there's a good chance it might be your brother. Or at least he might be one of them. Or at least he might be connected to why this place is so fucked up. Okay. I'm not good at breaking news softly, sorry. 
Okay, well, um... <clears throat> you need to sit what? down. No, what, uh, what, what? What? Now, what do you want to do here? You trying to, like, help him move on? What's someone's a spirit that don't really move on? Uh, okay. I, uh, and as he goes to, uh, to speak words, wits awareness. Uh, Just you. Okay, Maya, I'm sorry. I'm gonna willpower three. Okay. Five. Okay, with five successes, you weren't entirely... Uh, it, it took you a minute. You heard it, but didn't register. It was very, very, very quiet. And when you look towards where the noise came from, you actually see at the front door a very short figure slipped in between the cracks. You only heard it because she, uh, her little dress got caught on the nearby door. But what you see is a very young girl in a white dress and long hair, a really, really uh, innocent look to her as she scoots in between and she was leaning up against the door watching before you looked over and catch eyes on her as she then smiles warmly. She looks like she's no older than 10 at most. And it's like midnight right now. He does not seem to have heard. Okay. Uh, Crowley's just gonna like glance over at her, seems slightly confused and taken aback for a second. And then, uh, yeah, um, one second. Crowley's just gonna walk straight down the center towards her. You start walking, and uh, he looks over, and he goes, Ah, oh, wasn't expecting you tonight, I'm sorry. And she smiles, and then she takes a step forward and looks up to Crowley. Hi, mister. Hi, who are you? And why are you at midnight? She reaches out with her little hand. The name's Emmy. What are you? Crowley holds out his hand as well, shakes it. She shakes it. Name's Crowley. Good to meet you, Crowley. Oh, you're handsome. Thank but you. can I talk to Needles over there just for a minute? Sure. I'll Thanks. stand outside. And she kind of skips by you and moves down the main hall, uh, down the hallway. Do you watch through the door or do you just step out and not even? Oh, I'll give, give them their privacy. Okay, like... so you give privacy. Maybe five minutes pass before she slips out and she looks up to you and smiles. Thanks again, mister. I'm going to go like fist bump her. She, she reaches forward. <laughs> she goes and, and, and fist bumps you with her tiny little fist. Stay out of trouble, kid. Always. And then she, you see her skip out and then leave. I go back in. Mm -hmm. He's still standing where you left him. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't know she was coming by tonight. Interesting friends. Yeah. Um. So about my brother. Oh, right. Um. Well, it would make sense if he's the other one on the other side of here. Because he's attached to this place. He died a death that is not exactly, um, quiet and peaceful. Um, so, uh. What, what are you planning to do about it? To be honest, I haven't thought that far ahead, but uh, someone- You can talk to him though? Yeah, I told him. Um, okay, can I watch? Look, Needles, I'm gonna lay it all out for you because, you know, the stuff that I'm talking about, the camera really is not on with. I mean, the prince does not like any of this. So, you know, if we, you know, at all have this conversation, then... I feel you. Okay. All right. But I hear you're not too fond of the camera, right? Yeah. Well, they're the reason my brother's gone. All right. Fuck him, then. Uh, 
he actually does give you uh, uh you say just like so nonchalantly and he just can't help but smile and he catches himself and try you see the smile wipe away for a minute as but... the smile wipes away like crowley like winks at him out the corner of his eye <laughs> look <laughs> someone's threatening someone i really care about I care about a lot and they've I'm got sorry. well they've got power yeah and i need some assistance and your brother might be able to assist me. Uh, you know, it's really hard to, 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 to know what to say to this stuff. This is the first I've ever heard of any, any of our kind able to do what you're doing. Yeah, there's uh, two of us in Chicago now. No, so they're not, you're not common then. Less common than we used to be. What, do I need to do anything for you? I don't trade in boons and that. I think it's a bit messed up. And of course, it's not even going to be your permission I need. It will be your brother's. But if you don't want me to, I wouldn't. But if you want to talk to him. Yeah, I would like that a lot. It might not even be him on the other side. But it seems likely. No, I'll be... You know, if he's not there, maybe I'll even feel a little relieved. Now that you're telling me this place is haunted. Well, this place is... Uh very fucking haunted so more than just him but yeah well if he's there do you have something that used to belong to him that was very personal you don't even he doesn't fi- you don't even finish the sentence before he reaches into a nearby pocket and pulls out a uh ha- what looks to be hand carved rosary bead rosary beads and he, he holds them out for you to just take out of his hand and the cross is really thick but as you pick it up you don't feel pain or anything, it doesn't carry any true faith in it. Or at least he doesn't carry true faith in him. This was, uh, his. Right. I'm gonna do the thing. All right, well, Crowley starts a rather long process after he gathers the, what, what the, the, the uh, rosary beads from needles. The first of many ceremonies tonight, I believe. And this was the the longest one. And so what, Crowley, would you, how would you, I described it last time, but if you want to go ahead and maybe you've got an idea, go right ahead. I mean, this time he's very much, very close to the abyss in this place. And although it doesn't normally show as evidently, I think his eyes do start to like fill with shadow from the edges in. And you can see it very slowly taking effect as he sort of cuts his hand and then just holds the rosary beads in the hand and he's just going to sit there staring forward as his eyes start to like glaze over. And you mutter uh, words that to anybody else who doesn't understand your language uh, don't make any sense. There's a, while they may echo in whispers throughout the church, there's an unnatural echo to them uh, that's layered on top, your voice distorted and a little lower in a different range and a different pitch, almost coming in on a different frequency, it seems. And for the better part of an hour, you spend your time spilling your vitae, clutching uh, the the fetter. What do we roll? Uh, five messy, but the threshold's also reduced by two in this area, so that's yep. a ridiculous success with a messy. Yeah, with a messy critical. Uh, uh, messy critical on summoning a spirit. Uh, you know what? I fully under... You know, here's what happens, Crowley. The veil is thin here. You know what? I'll actually just re-roll that 10. I'm so scared of actually a messy critical. Oh, no, 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 sir. It's a little late now. <laughs> okay, there is okay, no going okay. back. You can't co- <laughs> say okay and then hear me begin to describe it and then be like, never okay, mind. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the veil is thin here, and that's part of the reason this place is so intriguing to you as you surround yourself with the thin uh, veil of the abyss or what you're dealing with there. Um, is Summon Spirit and Oblivion, by the way, Stain? Uh, only for roll a 10 on the rouse check. Only rouse, right. Is this a rouse? Did you roll your rouse? Was this a yeah, rouse? Yeah, I got a six. 
Oh, you just oh you oh you just rolled it now. Sorry. I was, uh, I was sorry, I think up. it came through weirdly. Oh, okay, yeah, I just got that. I was like, wait a minute. Um, so uh, you you so you spill your vitae and you start speaking these words and you clutch the the rosary beads in your hands and all the while in the background as the camera is fixated on Crowley, we see needles behind him quietly pacing back and forth sitting down at a pew for maybe a minute or two before he's up and pacing and sits down somewhere else. The nerves are obvious on him, and his footsteps can be heard throughout the whole church, mixed and intermingled with the chanting of Crowley. But when you finish spilling your bite and, and finishing the enchant, uh, the, uh, the chant, and those last words fall forth from your mouth, and it all goes silent for a minute, while needles may not hear anything, Crowley it goes from absolute quiet for you, beyond the background whispers letting you know that there are spirits here, to what sounds like shattering glass and a cacophony of voices that deafen you completely. Untold voices are shouting, whispering, screaming, uh, talking at you all at once from all sides. There is nothing that you can hear beyond their voice, and trying to pluck one from the mass is nigh impossible. but you have the power of the fetter. And you can assume if he's here, you can still try. Right. What was your brother called again? There's a lot of people here. Uh, he simply just speaks up. Bradley. Last name, a lot of people called Bradley. He actually uh, hesitates for a moment before giving out a, a, uh, a last name. Um, Father McCormick, McCormick, Father Bradley McCormick, would you mind speaking up a little bit? There's a lot of. So now we're going to go into compel spirit. I'm not going to, I'm not going to compel this guy right now. I think he not right now you just want to, you just want to try and, and like call him forward. Yeah. I want to talk to him instead of compelling him. I feel he probably wants to talk. Okay, yeah, so you're hoping that he'll make his way, or at the very least, for Crow Crowley will be able to hear through the chaos or see through the chaos, because as Crowley opens his eyes, it's not that he sees nothing before him. The reality before you, though, Crowley, is distorted, warped, like looking at uh, something underwater during rough waters. It's not a clear picture. What you see of the church is there, but it's cracked broken parts of it seem to be overlapping with others and then on top of that there's this bizarre veneer of this inky cloudiness that mm. occasionally you think you see form a face sometimes it's screaming before it falls away into just smoke other times it might form a silhouette or a hand reaching out to you and as it's about to touch your face again it dissipates into nothingness and flows away like water and all of that is all around you and you see endless faces and body parts reaching out grasping at you screaming some for help, some angry, obviously so, others tormented, and some curious looking, but they are not recognizable. But you continue to call uh, Father McCormick forth, keep reaching out, holding onto that fetter, feeling that his connection is nearby. I, I think, honestly, he tries a little bit. He's at the end of his tether a little bit, so although he tries a little bit to call Father McCormick out, as it takes, you know, time as you described, he's just going to get a bit angry and he's going to try and intimidate them. Like, he's going to start standing, blood dripping from his hand. Mm -hmm. Look. All of you here, I have no fucking idea what's going on in this church, but I want to talk to one of you. I'm the blood of the Cappadocian, I'm the blood of LeMay, and... You will fucking back off. And I will probably also just do the shadow power that shadows start petering out from him. Let's do, because you're trying to maintain a focus of the yep. area and, and whatnot, this obviously intimidation was going to be a bit of a weird role. Uh, let's, uh, instead of doing resolve. what, like charisma, charisma intimidation, let's do composure intimidation. Composure, as you're okay. attempting to keep yourself from being overwhelmed by everything and still shout. I think that's still a pretty good role for you because composure is an important stat. Uh, I get, I'm gonna willpower one dice. Okay. <laughs> one. One success. Again, the camera fixates on the front of Crowley and behind now that we're seeing things through his eyes. We can see needles in the background, but he's hard to keep track of as he walks through the cracked reality. It's almost though you see him walking through cracked glass. 
he's one spot and then as he walks through a crack he's maybe a foot to the right and it's hard to keep track and he's still blurred out of focus but, behind, but that there's that layer of smokiness behind and between them and all behind all of them are desperately reaching out these body parts to crowley and but crowley steps forward and shouts and we see needles stop for a minute as he watches because needles only sees as we cut to needles perspective only crowley standing there looking around angry shouting at uh, the, the nothingness around him and then we hard cut back to Crowley's and we can hear the whispering and the shouting that he's seeing with the confused needles in the background. Eventually though, in the inky blackness, a silhouette seems to form. It comes together and it pulls itself apart from the rest of the inky blackness, that, that murky water. And it almost struggles to do so as it differentiates itself from it. But as it does and it wrenches itself forward and almost like a like oil dripping off the back of it, being able to maintain its form with a, with a really intense focus. It looks to you and it simply speaks, what do you want? Would you be Father Bradley McCormick? Uh, he, he responds, uh, I am. I'm trying to get my, 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 all my soundboard presets are gone. I don't have my abyss soundboard anymore. I need to work. <laughs> oh, shit. Needles, what's something I could ask your brother that only he would know? Uh, uh, oh, um, he, he goes, uh, uh, ask him what we carved into the back pew. What did you carve into the, bra the back pew? Uh, he, he stops for a minute. Uh, the, the the needle stops in the background, like watching with anticipation before the voice speaks up. I hope this is good enough. We'll see. I turned my brother's dick into an angel. He carved your dick into an angel. Needles laughs. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, your brother wants to talk to you. Uh, the, the, the figure doesn't say anything, but still holds itself all on the sides, by the way, just to, their, the arms are no longer grasping at you, Crowley. Tons of them are trying to grab at him and pull him back. A lot of the hands and, and the body parts are, or just even just objects that, that come through almost meld into him as he fights to, to maintain control. His brother carved a dick into the pew and then his older brother changed it into like the best angel he could <laughs> that's oh there right. you go. that makes a lot more sense there, there you go it did sound a little bit gruesome to begin with anyway <laughs> your brother would like to talk to you do you have a few minutes he simply uh again all of his answers are pretty straightforward and not very conversational shall we say Speak what you want now. My time is limited. Needles. Would you like to spend some time with your brother? Yeah, yes, of course. And he actually walks over to you. In the back, we see him walk through the cloud, but... Father McCormick, would you consider yourself to have been a good person? Uh... When, when you actually ask that question, no words are spoken. You simply feel hate and rage. Right. Your time's limited. Uh, the, the, the feeling intensifies. He does not speak. This is a really dumb idea. Oh, okay. Do you want to actually talk to your brother? Who are you asking? Needles or... Uh, uh, McC Father Bradley? McCormick. Father McCormick. There's an intense feeling of desire. I'm going to host Spirit. Uh, I thought that's where you were going. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's uh, pop open host spirit real quick just to get it. Uh, you're going to need to roll a... Um, browse check. Browse check, absolutely. Pass. A gift to be made as a tribute to the wraith. 
Uh, oh, do you have another leech on you? I assume you do. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I was probably brought to leech for this. I was planning for this one. Wait, 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 I'll say with this and going into the church, I assume this was we were yeah. going down this road one way or another. On top of that, though, okay, you don't rouse in hunger. I have brought like a really cheap bottle of wine to be the like uh, the like the sacrificial wine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. On top of that, though, <laughs> as we saw the first time you did it, you still have to once again remove teeth yeah. from your mouth. Crowley now carries that pair of pliers. Uh, sorry, yeah, Ollie, you need yank. your pair of pliers. He just, like, I know Needles is standing there, but he just pulls out the pliers, <laughs> pulls out his incisors, puts the leech in his mouth, You hear down. Needles in the background as you kind of drop to your knees and begin the ritual. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you, what? I'm yeah, you you spit a tooth out, you. you can actually hear it hit the ground of the stone ground, it's like, clink, and then it kind of skins Uncorks off. Uncorks a bottle of wine, pours half of it on the ground, pours half of it in his mouth. Wait, what are you, what are you doing? What? I'm giving you a chance to talk to your brother. Uh, uh, and then you just go for the next one. Crack that one out. <laughs> Hit that one out. Yep. Hits the ground. That one clacks at the side of the pew. From uh, the comic, you can use my boy as a way to host yourself. Now you need me to make me a, a, a successful oblivion ceremony roll, please. Uh, that gets a ridiculous amount of successes because the minus two in the area. Yeah, and, and you rolled five on top of it anyway. Yeah. And when you when you offer your body, there's no hesitation from the father. All the voices dissipate as as the 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 rituals begin to end and as he steps forward and oh, pulls wrong himself. Okay, there you go. Where's the print himself, button? <laughs> there we go. He pulls himself free from the mass behind him, and he just steps forward and walks directly into you. What we see from the camera is that he just matches the position that Crowley finds himself in. And as he matches the silhouette of Crowley with that of the figure that pulls himself from the abyss, it dissipates and slowly Crowley, the noises all disappear from that surround you, that the grasping arms and, and whatnot no longer grasp at you. And instead, you have a passenger comfortably riding in the back seat. I am just, you just going want to give to... him control. I'm trying to think if it give him control, is it for the scene or is it for the entire duration of a power? Uh, let's see. Vampire makes blah, 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 blah with the wraith inside. So make sure you give yourself plus two physical, all physical plus two health until he departs. The vampire can hear the wraith in their head. Advice, cajoling, supportive words, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a wraith can choose to assert its possession instead of acting as a passenger. If the vampire resists, you make a resolve plus composure versus the wraith or all resolve composure. If successful, the wraith influence is rejected. If failed, the wraith steers the vampire until the end of the scene. So it is the end of the scene. And he, he can't yep. make anything do the vampire. He can't make the vampire do anything self-destructive. Yeah, in so which case just I... Be like, oh, I'm going to rip off your head now, huh? Uh, right. Needles. I'm going to give you a lot of trust here. I'm going to go away for a moment. I'll be back in about half an hour or so. I'm going to voluntarily give the Wraith control. And when you do so, it's not as though you fall asleep or go into a door for and the world disappears from you entirely. You see it, but it's almost like, have you ever seen the movie Get Out? If you haven't, I will describe for those who haven't. But when he falls, like he gets hypnotized or falls into a sense, the real world fall, it's still there, but he sees it through a dark tunnel far away. He can hear the words and he can see what's happening but he is a passenger in the vehicle. And that's very much what happens to Crowley. You go to the dark place and you disappear for a while and you can see the movements and whatnot, but it's like you're watching a television show in first person or a video game let's play that you are, no, that you are not directly in control of. And what the camera sees is posture change. Crowley kind of carries himself very lax. He's a relaxed guy, even as a kindred. He, walk, he walks around with his shoulders a little bit more down than most people. I wouldn't say Crowley likely walks with a hunch, but there's a uh, laissez-faire feeling He sits with it. a hunch, but I don't think he walks with a hunch. Sure, yeah, that, yeah, he sits with a hunch, but you've got a, a laissez-faire stroll, and you just got this aura of calm uh, around you, even with the obvious predator, when mortals get more scared when they're around him. But that changes. His shoulders go upright. He stands a little straighter, stands a little taller, and he has his arms no longer 
kind of crossed or, or, or what have, uh, or lacks by his side, but instead put behind him. And for a minute, as the, he kind of changes posture, there's a weird blink in his eyes and he holds his hands forward and he looks down and looks at his clothes. He holds out each leg. And then he looks over to, to Needles and looks confused. And in Crowley's voice, you simply hear him say, who are you? And Needles looks confused and returns the question, Bradley? And there's a tender moment there where they stare at one another. And Crowley's body eventually has that look of recognition. He had to see past the Nosferatu out exterior, the, the unfortunate mutilations that take over the body of that particular clan. But there he is. He's still there under the mess. And we see the two of them run toward one another. And they embrace one another. And on that, we will fade for a moment and we'll pick up outside Terry's bar. We see a little Dakota walking by, getting a look, and we see her walk in. Dakota spends maybe 30 minutes. She has a drink, enjoys the time around, gets a good understanding of what's inside this bar and sees something she likes, something that she's been looking for for a little while and she finally found the perfect one. Sure, there are plenty around in the city, but this, none that's vintage like this one. We see Dakota finish her beer, and as she walks out, she gives a gentle pat to an old jukebox by the door and leaves. Heading back to Ollie's bar, presumably. I kick the door in, <laughs> cheer style. <laughs> Everybody knows you. Yeah, exactly. Just like <laughs> um, full blast music. Yep. Uh, is it's? I'm guessing it's relatively early in the evening. Yeah, we're still but looking I, at like we can even say this is like when he's heading to uh, Crowley's. Probably just heading into the church, and Crowley's only been at the church for like an hour. Great. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have a seat. Yeah, you're just gonna chill at Ollie's bar, right? Yeah. I got. Yeah, I'm, I got. I need to speak to Crowley, but I can't really yeah, do that till he's back. So. Figured, yep. I'm just gonna pop a, pop a squat. Is Ava That's here? That's fine. Ava's probably around, unless she doesn't um, want to be around. The only thing I had to do was, uh, we left off, I was at uh, Eric's place, mm -hmm. and I needed to check on um, uh, Crowley's uh, daughter. I was going to check her Facebook. Oh, you're going to check for her Facebook page. That's yeah, right. so if there's anything that I got Absolutely. from Absolutely. So you wanted to check, no, you wanted to check Crow the, the, the sister's page to see if there's any inter inter interaction yes. on the daughter's page? Uh, yeah, uh, check Facebook for Emily is what I wrote as a note. Okay, 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 uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think well, the plan was to see the last time she had checked in so we could see how long yeah. she's been missing. Uh, yes. Well, the first thing that, that uh, Ava would notice after you, you know, you, you uh, feed off of him or what have you and he goes to sleep for the night and you're able to use his laptop, uh, you're looking for Emily uh, Croft's page specifically. And yes. the very first thing you realize when you believe you found the one, I mean, there's a lot of Emily Crofts. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of Emily Crofts. Would you be able to, to, to pick out the one? I, I, gave, you I, gave, I gave the URL. I actually gave the URL. Oh, you gave oh, the direct did, URL? Yes. Even yeah. better. Yeah. So you Probably just go to the direct URL and you see that it's private. Um, I am gonna... So I guess I'm logged in as... as yeah, you're logged Eric. in under his name. <laughs> I'm gonna just send a friend request anyway. <laughs> yeah, no. That's very Toreador of you. Yeah. yeah, you send a friend request. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you friend request the family? Do you friend request the sister as well? Do you just friend request? I need to I need to write this down, but I need to know who else you friend request. Uh, I'm gonna friend request um, the family as many people as I can. See if I mean you could easily find the family. In fact, you can even see sister does, or, does, or her uh, sister. Does do you have your old Facebook page up there, Crowley? Like untouched since you quote unquote disappeared. Crowley but Alexander died Crowley. Facebook was a thing. Oh, you did die before Facebook was a thing. That's right. Never mind. I don't know. Okay, I'm dumb. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna friend. Uh, it's quite a while before Facebook was a thing, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, the both of the daughters, rather. Yeah. The wife. Um. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna see just because uh, Croft. Who, whoever replies I'm just or whoever everything accepts. Off and I'm just gonna write Croft family. Family, yeah. From Eric. <laughs> Yeah, this should be interesting. <laughs> Got it. You send friend request. It doesn't take you long. Facebook is easy to navigate. And you send off your friend requests. Beyond okay. that, 
Do you leave that night afterward? Yes. Do you ditch him every night? Yes. <laughs> every time do you never stayed the night? No, not Great. yet at least. That's fantastic. So you head back <laughs> to Ollie's bar and you see Dakota sitting at the end of the table there. Okay. Uh, and, and so you can grab a seat next to her. Uh, did you want to talk to her, Dakota? Uh, Ava, about anything? Or just just seeing if she was there? Uh... Well, if she got back from the night of finding out information, then yeah, yeah. She, it was super quick. She didn't do much. Facebook, you know, yeah. Facebook friend requests and a couple of uh, a couple of uh, checks on the pages and that's great. It. I'm like, how's your boyfriend? Oh, he's great. He's great. And he's not uh, only great. He's he well. You don't have to say this, but you know, Ava, he is so goddamn head over heels in love with you. It's stupid. <laughs> he's doing wonderful. He's <laughs> sound asleep right now. So did he lick your shoes this morning? <laughs> he will do whatever I ask him to do, but uh, did you did you uh, uh, Facebook? Um, I did. Yes, I did manage to find um, Crowley's daughter, daughters actually, and his wife. Um, the thing with Facebook is usually people keep their information kind of private. So I know Dakota, you probably. Don't know too much about social media, but people don't just throw their information out on the internet. You kind of have to become Isn't their that friend. What social media is uh, to a degree, yes. Um, I had to send what they call a friend request so that I can get access to all of their information, or at least as much as they put on their profile. It was private. I couldn't see anything other than her photo. So okay, we'll so... see. I may have sent a friend request now mm, not yet um if she accepts i also sent one to is she possibly missing that's why i also sent to the wife and the other sister <laughs> <laughs> just in case <laughs> wait you sent friend request to the whole family yes because what if she's missing then we can try to at least get a lead from maybe the other family members you know you look really stalkery kind of that's what people do on social media <laughs> they try to stalk each other and it's partially true yeah <laughs> well this is why I'm we don't have social you media on that because <laughs> no, i don't know it's anything it's about it you know, it's, like, it's like tagging your animals it's like microchipping your pets Remember, you're humanity five. They're, they're, the kids yeah. are nothing, dude. They're they're yeah. they're fucking below you. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. So, just hopefully, you know, Eric, if he if he asks, it'll be fine. I'll I'll deal with that. But anyway, we'll probably find out in a few nights. Like he did it on his Facebook. Well, yeah, I don't have a Facebook, so <laughs> so he looks like the stalker. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. He does. <laughs> and as the two of you giggle great. over, as, as the two of you giggle over the framing of some poor man that really does nothing to do with why his life is falling apart, the kitchen door swings open and a young girl walks out. Can I get a description, Ollie, from you as to what this girl looks like? Sure. Yeah, uh, she is probably I would say like five foot six, five 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 six. She's got short blonde hair. Um, it seems to be dyed various colors um but she is wearing a, a fair amount of, of, of makeup um duties herself up well but pretty much anything past the neck there's various tattoos of, of everything like pop culture reference to like pinup ladies to um anything that you can kind of think of that was popular in any form of, uh, of the time but she carries herself uh very well you may have seen her leaving but never sticking around uh she is my cosmetologist yeah, you have caught eyes on her very, 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 very rarely. Uh, there was one time, I think, early in the season that there was any, like, personal interaction with her. Beyond that, only person who might have caught her would have been Zach, obviously, because he would have been here early a lot. Uh, Dakota as well, because she comes to the bar more often than anybody else. But again, only ever catch eyes. And you probably know of her, but this is the first time you're seeing her. She walks out of the kitchen. She goes behind the bar and she starts making a drink. She doesn't really say anything to anybody, though she doesn't look like she's upset or anything. And she's making herself a mixed drink. She finishes it up, uh, and and um, when when she's done with it, she turns around. It's rather colorful, and she uh, takes a sip, hmm, and smiles, and then begins to walk back into the back of the kitchen. I lean over to Ava. I go, 
Edgar placed you. I see he did, yes. <laughs> Interesting. Mm -mm -mm. Hmm, the new girl. <laughs> Perhaps I'll introduce myself. <laughs> Does Ava get up with that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just stir stirring that up. pot. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Out of curiosity, Ava, is awe on? It's about to be. As I go <laughs> introduce myself to her. So you walk, you walk in uh, right around the bar to the kitchen door, and you very elegantly swing the door open as the dress fall, flows behind you uh, elegantly and smoothly. You almost look like you're floating on this ground as you typically do. And as you walk back, you can actually see her uh, having a, a saying, have, a sipping her drink, and about to say hi to Ollie and Grant back there as well, ch chatting it up with with her before he's about to uh, head out front to take care of the bar. You turn awe on. And before yes. Grant can go anywhere, he turns to leave, but of course catches eyes with you. And uh, and then is like, ah, oh, beautiful. Good to see you. And he walks over. See and uh, Haley spins around as well. And she smiles widely as she locks eyes with you as well. And Ollie, <laughs> you see what's happening. It's very <laughs> obvious. <laughs> Um, you can actually kind of feel it. You, you realize that it, you know, the, the call of her blood is just, it's impossible to resist for mortals. And so uh, Haley and Grant, as they were about to go about, or Grant, Haley was going to keep talking to you and Grant was going to go about the bar, both have turned their attention to Ava as she walks back. Oh, hello. You Love must be the new girl. <laughs> she, she smiles and she's like, as you kind of daintily Extend, kind of put your hand out, she grabs hand. both with both hands and gives it a solid shake. Uh, and she's like, damn right, man. Name's Haley. Haley. And you? Ava, very, very nice to meet you. Thank you very much. It's, it's a, man, he look, she looks back to you, Ollie. You didn't tell me you would work with somebody like this. Why do you need me? <laughs> oh, so you're working here full time now? Is that it? She, she smiles, looks back with you. Uh, I mean, full time, maybe, maybe. I'm, he just needed my help. Ollie, you didn't tell me you were adding such a beautiful new staff member to your crew. She actually like she blushes. She and you never you very rarely see Haley blush, but Ava called her beautiful. And she's only known Ava for 30 seconds. And she calls her beautiful and she was looking back to you, Ollie, and you see the the, the blood rush to her cheeks as she immediately gets embarrassed by that. That never happens with her. I didn't know that I had to check in, but you know, yeah, she's she's a looker. Yeah. Well, that's great. I am so looking forward to having you around, Haley. Right? Yeah, Haley and uh, Ava. Right? I won't. Yes. I, there's no way I'm fucking forgetting that, dude. And she <laughs> smiles and she's like, "I gotta go out front, but uh, I'm assuming I'll see you around." Of course, I'm always here. She looks you up and down very obviously, and she just goes, "Damn!" and walks out. Grant looks up to you and he's like, uh, did you forget about me? <laughs> Grant, I could never forget about you. <laughs> She's so beautiful. He looks up down. What am I fucking chopped liver? Oh, Grant. You know I, you're you here, Dakota? Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> <laughs> I yell out from the bar. <laughs> oh, so, Ollie. Uh, Grant, how Grant looks, you, looks at you like, <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I, on one and you're like oh yeah grant and then you didn't say anything to him <laughs> as you asked him and go right yeah to ollie and he's just yeah. like the fuck do you turn it all off at that point or do you actually leave it on um i would turn it off at that point and, and I, so you I, turn it off you walk by grant just ignoring him and he goes the fuck and he goes out front and the, do you hear the door open and shut but ava just ignores him <laughs> ollie that was that was the cruelest you've ever seen ava treat yeah grant I think you find your employees crying in the toilets over Ava on a regular basis at this point. Hey, I feel like, like all of a sudden, the door, like, you find Grant and go, <laughs> she only we, used my first we, name. And uh, like, look at this and go, I feel like the last three episodes, Ava has just like fucking burst out of the cocoon and be like, fuck all of you. I am a Toreador. Right. <laughs> I am a beautiful butterfly what? and all oh, of you. Where did this come great. from? <laughs> it's great. I don't I don't know, but it's great. <laughs> She's finally I'm owning loving her it. I'm not though. hating it, but that's yeah. like, like I do you, you check. like Ava has truly, truly Tracy, figured how long have you been playing out. Bloodlines? Has it been three or four weeks? Yeah. <laughs> right? I think it has started ever since I <laughs> oh. started playing a Toreador and Bloodlines. Wow, it feels like there's a correlation there. <laughs> Who could have yeah. guessed? Yeah. 
It's the great. dialogue it's options great. in that game as a Toriador are great. So anyway, sorry, <laughs> I sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it's just like no, it's, it's such fine. a shift, and it's like been coming for a while, and it just feels like Ava got over the hump finally, and she's just like, "All right, we'll play it my way," and that means being mean to people like Grant. Because she really, like, if you think about it, Ava probably doesn't actually give a shit about Grant in any way. Other yeah, than he's yeah. useful. He's well, very useful yeah. and he does his job. But you don't She's like. She's grown a, a small soft spot for him. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He's like your favorite, like, frog. Yes. You know? He's nice. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I apologize. I really wanted to kind of levitate the, the, I just really wanted to bring the, the, the seriousness of just mm -hmm. the transformation of Ava recently. But Ollie, you see all that happen and then she just walks by Grant and walks over to you. Ollie, I didn't know that you were uh, bringing a new a new lady into town. I, again, I know you don't have to check in, but I'm just curious. Did, do you just need the help at the bar, or what's the... You know, I, I gave you a shot. I tossed you and a paper. I said you could earn it, and you threw it back at me. And then you started bringing your nightcaps back here. Oh, oh and really of some of the few basic things that i've asked you to do you just have a hard time listening to it i told you not to use that fucking hoodoo that you got and did it not bring here. business you know i gotta i gotta tell you as pretty as it makes you it's a real ugly side of you this jealousy <laughs> fine is, did I Dakota walk it. back at like at this point? I imagine out? I'm just leaning in a doorway <laughs> watching this. Happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. You always call it as it is, Ollie. I can always count on that. Look, Ava, there is no questions asked. You are always a shining star in any room that you walk into. You are stunning. You're beautiful. You don't need. You don't need kindred power, in order to flex that. And over Grant and Haley. Come on. They can't control that. That's that's not even fluid. That's just manufactured. Now, I guess if, if you needed to inflate something, then sure. But you know that you're much, much more than that. Haley's pretty, but Haley needs help. And with us being gone a lot lately, Grant needs help at the bar. It makes sense. No, no. You What you're saying... It's totally true. She's just making sure she's top bitch still. <laughs> well, just pee on her boots next time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we do it, Dakota. That's how you do it. <laughs> no, that's what Dakota does. Dakota, yeah, yeah. This is, <laughs> Dakota yeah. walks over and marks her spot. Yeah. Well, I'm wishing Haley all the best success. But you're right. We have been busy. But if you ever need any other help, extra help around i'm happy to to do that again sometime just just letting you know just, i was hoping that you'd see her here and you'd kind of help show the ropes sometimes it can be a little ugly around here you know it's pretty much a sausage fest constantly so having another lady here can especially not with your and and dakota's level of, of power i mean it can be a of little course. intimidating at times so be kind be kind you're right you're right Dakota and I will help her. I appreciate Get her. <laughs> Dakota in the doorway, like, what the? <laughs> she just got signed up for something. Yeah. Was yeah. told that it's a sausage fest, even though there's two of us around all the time. Yeah, but and... remember, there's, there's constantly like. Like the patrons. Oh, Kendra. Yeah. Come in. Well, How here's the way. Feel? So here's the thing, right? With this bar specifically and why it's mostly a sausage fest, especially, <laughs> is that when you walk in, uh, well, should we just put it this way? There's always the chance Ava's going to show up. With sausages. People know that. <laughs> and <laughs> when Ava walks in, it's just like, it's it's just, even if they don't ever it's get to up. talk or touch her, just seeing that power is just enough to get people to honeypot and, and, and come back. And so a lot of the time. Sure. Kind of comes around that way. It's good for business, but they need another eye candy to, to replace when they don't get their Ava. Right. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Plus, the last I talked to her, and it, it had been a while, she said you've been having problems with a guy. Mm. Some, uh, some guy, I think she said that, he, she didn't directly say that he was a politician, but she said that there was someone that was working in politics that was kind of squeezing her. 
And if there was anyone that knew how to work that scene, I thought that you would be able to help here. Yes, politicians can be dangerous. So I will um, do it. So you've known her. I feel like she may be somewhat familiar that we, I've, we might have met at some point before, though I don't know. Haley's been coming around for about a year now. She's been in Chicago for about as long, as far as I can tell, but she came out here. And as far as I know, she was trying to, you know, model. She was an aspiring model, but she had all of this work and cosmetology stuff in, and she was doing it on the side. And I got referenced and well, it just worked out. She was doing my makeup since. Oh, good. Well, that's good to know. I'm sure we'll get along great. Yeah. <laughs> The venom that drips from those words, ever present. Anyway, I will uh, leave you to it. I'll head back out to the front. Sure. And you head back out front past Dakota as she's been listening and chiming in <laughs> with her grunts and laughs all the while, <laughs> leaving just Dakota and Ollie for a moment in the back. If that's uh, if there's any words that want to be exchanged briefly, but if not, Dakota can head back to her seat as well. I'll look over to her. So that was weird. Yeah. You brought a, a incredibly attractive woman into a bar where Ava is the only incredibly attractive woman. Oh. Listen, you don't give yourself enough credit. Ollie, it's very clear nobody comes here to look at me. Right, Grant? What's up? See what I'm saying? So. <laughs> then he, he peeks through the window. Why? What's up? <clears throat> Go back point to was working, made. Point, Grant. Point. She was making a point. Oh, yeah, and you made the point. He, he looks to you. You're damn right. And he goes back up front. <laughs> that been Ava, he would have tripped over himself to have come back here and ask me if I needed something. Yeah, but that's because she uses her. Yeah, I don't even know what to. What do we? What do we even call that? Uh, the power of her presence is what it's usually referred to. Just like her presence is unnatural. Her existence makes. Me yeah, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call it. <laughs> I, I love that Dakota translation. <laughs> Thank you. For, that was great. So, you know, the good news is it, she's right. It brings in people. So, but just expect that there's going to be some strange mean girl antics. <clears throat> going on. Well, like, I can say that even if I didn't work here, I'd still be coming back because I'm still into you. <laughs> you missed the point, Ollie, but I appreciate it a lot. Kind of. Um, Ava's going to fuck her. You need to be ready for that. <laughs> and then she's probably going to fuck Grant, and you need to be ready for that. Yeah, no, I'm counting on it, actually. <laughs> Poor Ollie, all of his workers. Oh. <laughs> it's it's going to take a little bit of time, but everybody else needs to start seeing that the magic of the painting is really just, it's dodgy shadows, poor lighting. Probably, but if it works, it works. It's like beer goggles, you can't explain that shit. Danger thighs will strike again. I'm just saying, if you, if you, if you care, clearly you do, for this, this, uh, Haley. Haley's her name, right? Yeah, Haley, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, just don't let Ava break her heart. So I do like the idea of her finagling her way into some politician's pants so we can get some new information. I mean, I, I'm just, just looking to help her out, but I suppose if there is an angle to work there, then sure. I just, I don't I mean, need Ava going full Regina George. I'm just saying, if she <clears throat> gave this politician something else to think about, something more potent than Haley, there's a possibility he'd just leave her alone. I like that. Yeah. Distraction. The good thing about being Regina George is everybody else wants Regina George. Though I don't, I don't. actually totally get that reference. I assume <laughs> that she is the top dog, uh, the, the pretty one. Your supernatural kind of, yeah. knowledge lets you know. Yeah, yeah, my supernatural knowledge lets me know that Regina George clearly means something I mean, on the upper crust of the food chain. Academics have to have been spent like doing <laughs> right? something, right? 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> you started Great, watching, watching bad movies about school <laughs> at first. At some point in the Whoa, decade, bad? you would have watched. I didn't get to. <laughs> the true. Maybe not necessarily own. bad. Um. So, uh, do we know who this politician is? I don't know. Um, she never really said anything, but I'm I'm guessing that she probably had a bit of a working angle trying to get in, and you know, bumped some elbows. She found her way into a club, and someone was spending money a little too fast. Uh, she didn't have anyone here. She doesn't have any family. She doesn't have any friends. I mean, up until recently, it seems, but you kind of got to do what you got to do to get by. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm not judging her. I'm just saying we need to know more about this guy. If he is actually powerful, we are walking a really, really fine line. I agree. And if we start harboring her here, he may not follow your rules. I agree. We'll figure it out. It'll come up. Plus, I just, I'm, I'd like to get her seated in here for a couple of days before I start prying a little bit. Probably a good idea. <clears throat> I have to, uh, go now. Uh, something to do tonight, but I, have you heard from Crowley? No, no, it's I still early in the night. He should, he could show up at any moment. Fantastic. I just got to with a, and then I, I'll be back. Okay. And I like, do you want to talk to Ava? Yeah. On my way out of the, out of, on my way out. I'm like, Hey, Ava, you know, you're, um, good with aesthetics and all that jazz. Mm, um, yes. I'm going to be bringing, uh, making a delivery tonight of a rather large item. I think you could maybe like rearrange the bar make the space wall preferably next to that outlet <laughs> I point <laughs> the like only outlet you have around <laughs> uh yes of course okay great 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 um gotta uh gotta go have you heard from Crowley <laughs> no yeah. no I assume he'll be back or he'll be here tonight <sighs> Okay, well then I can't go anywhere if we don't know where Crowley yeah, is. Yeah, so don't I worry, sit. we're gonna we're, we're yeah, gonna. Now we'll I get sit and I'm there. anxious. I finished so peeling my, it. My like, one last question for Ava is: Does Ava actually move things on her own, or does she just have the patrons move things for her? Um, I would have the patrons move things for I me. I thought so. So Dakota, yeah. while you're like, I can't actually <laughs> go anywhere. You sit there, and then Ava just kind of looks around and catches eyes of a few people, and their eyes kind of lock with hers and don't let go. And she's like. I imagine you do it in a very helpless, like, oh, boys, these are so heavy. Again, you just start dictating, like, to move things, and, like, four or five of them get up all, you know, the, the couple that don't just watch and maybe even give verbal help. Uh, but you just see the people get up and start moving things for her. And the people move like ants, a colony to their queen, and listen. We cut back e to the church because I'm not going to have EE. Uh, e e, I love you, but I'm not going to role play with myself for 15 minutes as much sure, as I Sure, I, I really enjoy watching <laughs> you role play. <laughs> I just want to role play with myself. Uh, again, as a passenger of this conversation, it's interesting to watch because the words are there and you, you hear them, but they're still, they seem miles away. Everything seems so distant, but you can understand it. And the conversation between these two very quickly devolves into reminiscing about their childhood and you get an understanding for their camaraderie that you're not sure if it was a broken home, a broken parentage or, or just a rough uh, being bullied, but it very much becomes clear that the two of them were the only support system they had as they grew up. And there is an incredibly deep bond between them and that his death, his brother's death as Needle speaks, seems like it was sudden and unexpected. Mm. More importantly, it happened the same night that he was embraced. The church was then defunded or completely abandoned for one reason or another that Needles doesn't really understand. He's trying to get answers from his brother. Why would the church be abandoned? But his brother responds that he doesn't understand either. The church should have been picked up by the parish or uh, the, uh, what's the right word for that section of the, the, the church that oversees diocese? Yeah, diocese. It's diocese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, that's, that hits my old Catholic school upbringing, like back of my brain. I forgot about that word, uh, but it was completely ignored and abandoned and then left to rot. And after a few months, it that's when needles moved in 
And that's when the visits began from the Baron. He kind of gives a little bit of a backstory to, to how he got to where he is. The brother talks a little bit about, um, as, as, as Needles asks questions about if he's okay, he tries to answer, but you realize it's very difficult for him to put into words the experience beyond the veil. He can use words for emotions, but it truly doesn't bring forth the, 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 the existence and what existence is like on the other side. And even now, it's glimpses and, and as, though, as though he can't truly remember all the details of it. But after maybe an hour of conversation, that vision begins to come closer and that the, the voice begins to get louder and he begins to get speak less as Needles continues to prod like what's going on, but you can feel him falling behind mm. as your presence begins to overpower him, whether he is he's exerted most of his energy and he just can't hold it any longer. And so you are kind of pushed forward as Needles is like, hey, hey, Brad, Bradley. During that time, Brad. there's also another interesting thing, which is that my beast is completely suppressed. Yes, oh yeah, your beast is not there. I think Crowley it's finds great. fascinating. You, yeah, it's again, it's like uh, that weird kind of in the back door existence. All the things that are there are kind of just gone or far away. Yeah. And now it comes back and you can actually, it's it's maybe the reminder for Crowley is like the beast, you can feel the beast kind of returning. And that weird peace that you were feeling is just, it's, it, you forgot what that felt like. But you come back at to Needles being like, hey, hey. Right, uh, sorry, me oh, again. Oh, uh, uh, he's yeah, still here. <laughs> Uh, when when you when you like oh yeah me again and he's just like oh, oh and there's just immediate sadness that kind of comes across. Are you still here? He can talk to you. Um, uh, oh, uh, it's oh. just uh, he's a bit tired. Gotcha. Tired's maybe not the right word, but basically yeah. Uh, uh the, yeah. Being uh, on the other side changes someone. Um, it's good that he's still intact, but it's a draining experience. Uh, yeah, th thanks, uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you for, for that. I, it I does like mean a clap lot. clap him on the shoulder lightly. No, mm -hmm. no problem. Like I said, I do need help myself, and I'm going to ask your brother for it, but since I need to talk to your brother anyway, yeah, not like you've got some unsaid stuff. The church is open to you whenever you need it. You don't need to ask. Dude, this isn't like some... I need your help, but it's totally not, you know, you don't need to necessarily give me your permission, etc. I'd like a favor, but I'm not going to say it. No, genuinely, no, I, I, you don't need yeah. to. He, 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 he cut to you. I was like, I got to talk to my brother for a little bit. The church is open whenever you need it. Cool. No, I can't say I can do this often. It's a huge risk. It, well, it's a risk every time. But you seem like a good bloke. And it seems like your brother was a good bloke as well. Yeah, he was a good man. Even if he does carve angels on the back of pews when you carve a dick on them. Well, he was a better he was a better man than me. True. Maybe. And he kind of like looks. Yeah, we got what we deserved, right? Nobody ever gets what they deserve. Yeah. Yeah, that's even more true. Look, I'm going to need to talk to your brother for a bit, so it's going to look very strange, but um, you're more than happy to just give me a second. Uh, Bradley. Uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, he, he goes to respond, but then you go Bradley and just he cuts his, he shuts his mouth and doesn't say anything. And you, you hear a response. It's you're not sure if it's words, but definitely a response. Right. I think we've got a lot of time left tonight. You're more than welcome to uh, have a ride around if you fancy having a bit of a break from being stuck in this church. But there are a few places I need to go. You're basically saying you can stick around if you want. Yeah, I'm saying like he can he can leave if you want. I'll kick him out of the body. Uh, alternatively, he can just carry around with me for a bit if he oh, wants. If uh, you're if you're if you're allowing him to hitch a ride, yeah. uh, he you don't hear a response, but you don't feel him leave. Right, all right. Look, at some point in the future, look, someone I care about deeply is in trouble. And I would like any assistance I can get because the person who has them is very 
powerful and can also control wraiths, although they do it in a um a much more do my bidding or I will damage you kind of way. I prefer to ask nicely. I would appreciate any assistance. Contemplate. That's all the only word you get. What did he say? Contemplate. Contemplate. Thank you. And a word. I know that the other side is... It's not nice. And it damages you by staying there. And you get filled with hatred and rage. But... If you want to talk to your brother occasionally, if that helps you to stay in touch, I can arrange a few things. Would you like that? You hear one word, you just hear yes. Cool. So, how's he going to the pub? No response. <laughs> but he doesn't leave. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Needles. Thank you. Uh, what? Uh, oh, me and your brother are going to go to the pub. Oh, okay. That's weird. I mean, you're more than welcome to come if you want, but, uh... I, uh... Not tonight. Sure. Thanks again, Crowley. I, I, I don't think you know what it means to me. I've got an idea. But thank you. And, uh, and uh, he will go back to sitting in his pew. Do you keep the rosary beads? I imagine you do. Oh, uh, I start to walk out, not thinking about it, with them in my hand. And I go, oh, do you mind if I keep these? I need them to, um... They're his, not mine anyway. Thank you. Just, uh, when he leaves, could you just bring him back? Sure. Thanks. And you head over to Ollie's place, I'm imagining. Yep, I'm going to wear the rosary beads as well. That's totally fine. There's no power in them, so you can. Uh, and then eventually, uh, about, we'll say, like, after the whole thing, uh, Dakota, when you're at the door, Crowley arrives in, like, 15 minutes after that. The whole place is rearranged uh, at that point. Um, but Crowley walks in the front door, wherever. No, no song dies. Right. Uh, 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 Got to uh, 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 uh. And I just kind of grab him and start like pushing him back out the door. Crowley yeah, walks in, you grab him, and he sort of wheels around in the spot and gets led straight back out. Yep, exactly. Come on, exactly. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, chameleon. Good song. Oh, uh, sorry. Shut she up. Maybe oh, a bit yunky. I right. uh, uh, <laughs> sure, got him trying to drag him out of the bar. Sure. What's up, Dakota? I. I think you're really gonna like. Okay. Okay. So you know, uh, old Terry's bar. Right, yeah. Right. Um, I had a peaky, uh, was doing some just personal reconnaissance. They have something I'd like to require. Fancy doing a heist. Uh, sure. No, I'm <laughs> Perfect. Sure. Look, I've got a passenger today. Nice bloke. Used to be a priest. That's fine. Would they like to come as long as they stay fucking quiet and don't tell anybody? Would you like to come? Uh, you, you, you feel, uh, like an agreeable... F that would be a yes. Okay. Um, I need the ban. The item being acquired is rather large, and though I could carry it, may draw attention as I walk down the street. A proper heist. Okay, sure. Cool, great. <laughs> so you, you, the two of you walk, you walk for a bit to wherever Crowley usually parks his van, probably yeah. a good block or two away. Um, along the way, you, you, you can talk, but the, the, the sidewalks are still, there's people around, but most people are not paying attention to conversations, but eventually you get to the van, so if you want to wait, you can do that too. What time is it? Because the bar would be open now, yeah? Terry's? The bar would be definitely be open. It's like one, two in the morning, somewhere around there. We can park up like near the bar and like oh, have like, like a steak out until it starts to close. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, you I imagine that's, it out for yeah. the night until like 4 a.m. when, when cool. things close down. In which case, as we're staking the bar out, I realized that I don't have a lot of knowledge about Dakota's background as this character. So like as we're like sitting there in the van watching Terry's bar as it gets towards closing, 
You got any family to cover? Uh, my coterie. Right, yeah. No is the answer you're probably looking for. Have you ever had anyone you actually loved about oh, anything else? Crowley. Well, I had a I had a dog once. Right. Trying to do it differently the second time around. Over to the dog. They were killed. Oh. I'm sorry. It's okay. You saved my life. Hmm. Not sure if dogs have aspirations and dreams, but as it goes, it's not a bad way for a dog to go. Yeah. It's okay, I've dealt that justice. Um, hmm. I would say, do you have any family? But I know that now, so, uh, yeah, small it's talk. A... Yeah, I walked out on him. Because I died. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still think you did? Uh, I actually just disappeared. So they think you're an asshole. Pretty much, yeah. I know daddy problems. Uh. The difference is mine wouldn't fucking go away. Right. <clears throat> I'm assuming he's dead now. <clears throat> you killed him. Right. I okay. finished. A job that was already started. How did that make you feel? That I... That he's dead, or that I didn't get to kill him? That you finished a job. I would have preferred to have killed him myself. <clears throat> so, I guess you could say I have, uh... <clears throat> a little regret that it wasn't me that got to deal the justice. But it makes me happy every day that he's fucking dead. So I'm going to give it a take. What do you think is worse? Having a dad who you think walked out on you? Or having a dad who took the option to protect you but didn't ask you. Isn't your situation, aren't they the same? Situation. Yeah. Family's a weird thing. Don't get to choose your family. Well, I was lucky. I had a nice family for a while. Upbringing was hang on to. mediocre right? shitty, but yeah, well, as far as I understand, the Camarilla hanging on to anything tends to get it murdered. Not if you guess you do it in secret. Well, we were very secret at the time. My entire bloodline was a secret. And we moved around a lot. Must be why everybody's so interested in you being in town. That and I can talk to dead people. Only Bruce Willis Speaking can do of, that. Is there a dead person with us now? Oh yeah, his name's Bradley. He used to be a, a priest. A priest? Yeah. Um. Uh, cool. Um. Do you do that often? Only on special occasions. Tonight is a special occasion. Well, I might as well lay it out for you. So, that Giovanni Asa walks around with a ghost of his own. Of course he does. Why wouldn't he? Yeah. 
Great, so he walks around with a, 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 a ghost. So I asked Bradley if I could get a bit of assistance, if necessary, and Bradley said he'd think about it. Cool. Do they talk to you? Bradley, what's your best uh, priest joke? Shut up! He told me to shut up. <laughs> cool. He did emotional, <laughs> you know, beginning of the night, so it's fair. Okay. Uh, Dakota definitely now thinks Crowley's seeing a ghost. Um, <laughs> uh, so what do you do for fun, Crowley, other than eat people and speak to ghosts? Well, last uh, 20 years or so, we've just been trained, 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 but there was a bit of um, contemplation, meditation, gardening, um, crazy cooking food. I'm not a massive foodie, but it, it gives me something to focus on that isn't dead people. Cool. I, uh, I, I meditate sometimes, try to meditate sometimes. Ah. How does it work out for you? Well, it doesn't look like gardening. There's something peaceful about having something that is passive, that just sits there and needs tender care and grows. It's nice to be able to know that even in our death, we can still create something. Uh, I have not thought of it that way, though. I don't know there's room on the boat for plants, but I like silence. That. Is that a hint? Should I? Uh, no. Um... All right, all right. I mean, you can if you want to. I'm just really bad at small talk. What I, I I like to take the boat to the uh, middle of the lake yeah. where it, there's no sound and sit. It's nice. My doorbell just rang. <laughs> Ding dong. Look, sorry. No, we don't want our screen washed. No, it's, it's fine. I got it. I got it back. <laughs> okay. go. Thank you. Thank you. Right. You know, that sounds actually quite nice. It is nice. So, out of interest, how much you know about kindred history? I am learning slowly things. What I can pick up, it's not really a talked about thing and it's definitely not like my sire relayed any information so the gardening thing I picked up from my clan it's something that our uh, the patron of all kindred especially the patron of my bloodline kind of taught us garden. Tend your garden. Like, for real? Yeah. Okay, that, uh, like I said, I didn't know my sire, and she definitely did not tell me to grow plants, so. Oh, yeah, the entire bloodline's got this thing about, you know, tending your garden being an important tradition. It's so not just a metaphor. No, no, genuinely of to tend a garden. Do you have a garden? I have a bonsai tree. It counts. It's not as good as I'd like, but it counts. C cool. Look, uh, after uh, after she was thrown out of the garden, one of the commandments as you will, was to make sure you have your own garden and tend it. Of course, then Cain came along and, like, stamped all over that, but he was a bit of a fucker anyway. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you're talking about literally stamping the garden or a metaphor anymore. Um, I think both. Okay. <clears throat> so you're, you're just bringing all this, this with you and 
maintaining gardens here in Chicago? It would be nice to have a proper garden. It's one of the things I look forward to. Having somewhere tranquil, like you've got your lake and your boat. Uh, I get that. By the way, I need you to make a distraction. Oh yeah, I can do that. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um, I'm gonna fan around back when it goes dark, uh, and you can pick a lock, right? Right, you want me to make a distraction, you want me to pick a lock? Oh, I only need the distraction if they don't leave. Then I'll just burst in the back door, it's fine. I can pick the lock, then I go make the distraction. Okay. Alright. Okay. Right. gives you like a thumbs up that's like, great, that's both things at once. Perfect. I just need to be able to get out the back door and, and um put something in the back. It should be relatively simple, all things considered. You're what you're going for, and the bar is a hole in the wall place in the first place. Unless it's the haven for somebody, this should be relatively easy once everything goes down. You're looking to just wait for everybody to leave, pick the lock, cause a distraction if necessary, is my understanding? If necessary. Like if, if somebody ne somebody hears something, like Crowley needs to be there to just take You're just doing uh, a hit and run. Eyesight. You're just yeah, looking to get in, run. grab it, and go. And for the sake of simplicity and no real need, because then maybe this is something you all discover, this is not somebody's haven, at least not openly. Uh, you are able to pick the lock easily. You go ahead and make me your Dex Larceny check. Keep watch while he kind of picks. I'm like, you like music, Crowley? Uh, yeah, of course. It's super simple. Lock, you pop it. Like, like, yeah, cool. Crowley does it like one handed. Yeah, you just do it super quick without even looking. It's such a simple lock. You can hear the lock pop as you say, yeah, of course. And then he stands and the door is like creak, uh, not creak, but like push tiny bit. Open. Yeah, I kind of push it open. I look around. Bradley, um, I go. You pick that lock way too easily. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a priest here. Sorry. <laughs> I kind of like say like, uh, and I go kind of creep in. I'm going to go over to the jukebox and unplug it. Yep. You go, you walk through the bar. Uh, you're coming in through the back as you, as you go through the small kitchen area. It's so small, especially compared to Ollie's and Ollie's isn't big, but this is smaller than that. Wait, the it's bar small itself compared is, to Ollie's and Ollie's isn't big. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. It's even oh. tinier than tiny. Oh, oh, oh uh, my God. It, wow. You can only get like a couple of burgers going at one time back here. It's but like a micro. Front, the bar itself is kind of the majority of this building. And you see Dakota swing out from the back, uh, walk out from around Carrying. the bar. You know, she she walks over to a, the jukebox, which is uh, one of those old like 70s, 60s style jukebox. It's got the wood paneling on the sides. It's got like that off white band around the center with three like red bands. It's very, you, you once you have it in your mind, you kind of know what you're looking at. Dakota walks over, just plops, plops the, uh, pulls the wire out from the wall and, and just, just picks the thing up and then very simply with the thing on her shoulder just walks out the back door nobody stops her nobody's paying attention at least not in, as far as you're aware and as you walk out the back door Crowley you see her walking out with this jukebox she kind of has to hold it and put the jukebox out first she pushes it out follows it and then put, helps pick it up and puts it in the back of the van I'll strap it down make sure it doesn't go anywhere yep you sure you don't need a distraction <laughs> Crowley's like chucking half a brick up and down in the air. It, it doesn't really count if, I mean, I guess we could make it look like a much bigger thing, but I was just going to take it and go. Sure. I, needed... I guess I better get rid of this brick then. I chuck it through the window of the bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I figured was coming. And so. <laughs> and then we gotta go, run! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys go into the it's van. Just amateur hit and run now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. peel out. That'd be like as I'm about to get into the van, like he just goes, oh well, chucks it through the window with the extra like <laughs> go, ghost Shit. power and then just. <laughs> yeah, falls yeah. It. slide across I mean, yeah. the hood, hop in the mean, van. You, yep, and you're in the van and you, you kind of leave and you head back to Ollie's bar, which is not that far. It's like a 15 minute drive. Uh, as you arrive, you head back inside with the, do you head right away? Do you just I, go right in? Uh, uh, remember that distraction I was talking about? Yeah. Go distract Ollie. I don't have another brick, but I could. I didn't say hit him. I said distract him. Right, okay, sure. Just go be, go be you, Crowley. 
I'm pretty sure that's not a compliment, but sure. <laughs> Crowley hops out of the van, heads into the back where uh, Ollie's just taking care of business as he usually does on a night. The and golly, oh, something, something terrible happened. Oh, gee, oh okay. <laughs> ah, the tension in this place is constantly so high. Something's always happening. We need it's something it's to... got really awkward. I need, I need someone to talk to. I need something. Oh my god! I need something. Oh, while wow. Dakota break. is going to bring it through. Like, the front I'm trying door. to sneak yeah. past the kitchen door with this jukebox. As she goes past the door. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I need, uh, I need, I need, I need some like music to cut I, to cut the tension here. Like, if I <laughs> yeah. just some music, uh, just look, me and Dakota constantly. were talking, and I, and I, I think she likes me. <laughs> well, that'll distract him for a little bit. <laughs> Dakota goes. Yeah, Dakota just stops for a minute in the background. You just see her go. Uh, just, <laughs> look uh, over the jukebox. Like really I'm, awkward. So awkward. I look at Dakota like I'm like so awkward. <laughs> What's this? Dakota go down? keeps going. So it's taking off the apron. <laughs> All right. Go on. <laughs> so like she kept like uh, I was. Uh, Dakota, so this is like can, an atmosphere. This is like an energy when you feel is appropriate. Right. <sighs> I don't, I don't know how to describe it. She just, uh, I, th I think she was coming on to me. I mean, maybe I just don't, maybe it's an American thing. Maybe I just don't understand the culture quite as much, but. Hey, uh, actually, this is a good point. Would this, would this provoke frenzy out of Ollie? <laughs> he has to think about it for a moment. Because... Think about whether he's frenzying? <laughs> no, 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 no. He has to think about the action because if, like, if, if Dakota had been, like, flippantly sexual with people, then likely. But also, yes. uh, just, very, just to demonstrate how good an actor I am, no, it's true. A... That's true. We could get some some deception rolls. You really want to go mechanics? We can go. Yeah. Deception. Oh my god! If you are you really trying to convince Ollie of this? I'm... Yeah, I know, right? No, I want to explain how bad Crowley is at lying in any form. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> like just to describe his yeah, stats. everything I don't even need he to roll. says. It's all the stats. I have everything I he's can't. saying, Ollie. It's like that doesn't sound like Dakota at all. Are you sure we're, we're talking people? about the same person? Um. Low cut V dress, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, well, no, actually, I'm not. But she did say I need to distract you while she plugged that in. You probably hear the like first like click, and you hear the record like slide over and drop. <laughs> uh, first song is El it's gonna be an Elvis song. Uh, Hound Dog. It'll be hound dog. About a hound dog. Okay. <laughs> you suddenly hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and it just like zooms up on the on the jukebox. Ollie's uh, very slow to, to <laughs> that kind of joke, uh, especially in, in such like a soft spot. Uh, so he just kind of like peers over the door, over the top of, of Crowley. Bad fucking joke. Bad joke. <laughs> That's some specialty. I'll kind of like clap him and move on forward to uh, to hear the music. Head out front. Yeah. I and, imagine uh, that Dakota's already dancing with Ava. Yeah, we, Ava we got would Dakota be dancing, dancing too. Ava's yeah. dancing with her, and as Ollie walks out, <laughs> we'll actually, we'll pick up with the beginning of that scene after break. Oh, uh, nice. So we'll stop there as he's walking out, and it's like, cut the commercial. We'll be right back. Cut to a commercial for a minute. Enjoy <laughs> your lovely uh, fan art video. We'll also play the trailer for Dawn of the Others so you know what's coming tomorrow, the uh, the new season starting. Uh, so look forward to that. We'll be back in about eight minutes. So uh, go make a cup of tea, enjoy the, uh, the amazing trailers and uh, fan art. We'll be back in a sec.
Hello, welcome back to Vampire the Masquerade and roll for it. Uh, take it away, Mathis. So our scene picks up uh, as we fade back in to Ollie stepping out well from, from behind the kitchen into the bar area. A brand new jukebox is placed in the way, while your bar was not a disorganized mess by any stretch of the imagination. The way she's moved the tables, the way they've been lined up and, and sort of actually organized in a fashion uh, to make not only room for the jukebox, but uh, Ava takes it upon herself to go ahead and reorganize beyond just making room. And the way things, the mirrors on the wall have been adjusted and moved, the, the lighting hasn't really been moved because they're kind of static lights, but you know, you've got your typical neon bar lights that, that were hanging on the wall. All of that has been moved rather quickly too since the patrons were all helping, and it just gives this more spacious feel. There's an area that a couple people, maybe four to six, could actually couple up or or just in a group dance if they really wanted to near the jukebox. Not a huge dance floor, but one where there wasn't one before. And in that area lies that jukebox out of the 60s or 70s playing, uh, uh, what are you playing? Uh, Blue Suede, not Blue Suede. Uh, uh, Hound I did Dog. Hound Dog. Hound Dog uh, for everybody. And, um, and you see Ava just just taking the floor and dancing, but your eyes don't linger on Ava while the mortals do. Yours move over to Dakota, who's also in a very rare showing of, of joy and, and, and kind of levity, dancing as well. Her own style that is far from <laughs> Ava's, but it's more down to earth. It's more real. It's more with the beat. I probably try to go surprise and like gesture <laughs> to the jukebox. There's, there's, um, probably like a little, just a little bit of shake and Ollie's just kind of like clapping, not going to it. <laughs> I, I probably, I, I'll come over and put my hands up. Do you dance? I can try. Uh, and I go, Crowley, get your ass out here. <laughs> Crowley's <laughs> like, like instantly behind you. And uh, <laughs> he's uh, over next to Ava. Shall we, Crowley? <laughs> <laughs> Let's and see we what proceed moves you got. To, yeah, cut <laughs> you all proceed as a to go ahead and give me a dex performance check. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, that ghost. when you find out that somehow... Some I mean, the ghost does help. The ghost, <laughs> gives you plus, the ghost gives you plus two to all your physical stats, and oh, dex yeah. is a physical stat, so you're even more nimble. <gasps> can I... So I don't think it can go above five, Crowley. I think <laughs> it, can. it can. It can go what? above five. Can? All right, yeah. well, then take it. Wow, oh you all... God. I got a three. Power this. Because... Holy shit, Dakota did get a three. I got yeah. a three. Got that what dex, the... yo. She's just feeling herself tonight. Man. I'm just feel, feeling it. Feel it. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to kick on a power for this. Fuck it. Crowley needs to let loose. What's your hunger at, Crowley? Three? It's at three. Oh, I'll use my ability to knock it down one. Okay, yeah, you're once a session ability. Now you can push down your hunger one. Hunger three. It goes immediately back it goes up to up. three. <laughs> it goes to three, so it just stays at three. However... This is going to be the best performance How roll ever. How much food do you have left, by the way, Crowley? Uh, like fifteen or something. So I'm gonna, I'm getting into the danger zone where I've got like right. only five danger times I can do zone. this. True. <laughs> Dex. That's the next song. <laughs> yeah, that's up next. Song. <laughs> I'm willpowering. <laughs> You're gonna willpower because you just it. have to be better than Dakota. I love it. No, I need to make this dice pull three. worth it. I need to, I need Holy to make shit. it viable. I mean, that is a ginormous. <laughs> oh <Yes! laughs> my god. <laughs> Oh my yes! god. Yes! And them's the dice sometimes, baby. That's just it. It's not that Crowley's dancing badly. It's that Dakota is just dancing well. Three successes is still a good chunk of success. It's not a critical success, but for some reason, maybe it's the song. Maybe it's the way this, it sounds coming out of a jukebox that, that Ava is just not familiar with and, and Ollie just being caught by surprise by the whole thing. You know, is not going to really feel himself, but Dakota, and it makes sense that D Dakota and Crowley would be the ones dancing right now. They knew this was coming. They were kind of mentally prepping for it. There's no way each of them wasn't going to dance when this came on. And uh, maybe there was even discussion about what song they were going to play first when they got back. And so, while you're dancing like with- Like, we've with already our, choreographed our moves, so we're like both doing <laughs> the same bit at the beginning. I say, while, 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 you know, Crowley is dancing with Ava and Dakota is dancing with Ollie, there are moments where you just guys have kind of like let it go and have fun, and there's the, Crowley and Dakota have some really good moments together. And we kind of just see this, while a few people from the bar get up and join, we kind of just watch this moment of literal levity and, and uh, enjoyment for Dakota, something the four of them Especially specifically have not had sure they've had drinks together and they've had food together but there's always that undercurrent of 
learning about Crowley or not trusting the coterie and the discord between them. Now, while they robbed the Anarchs for the jukebox, <laughs> there's just them as friends, as companions, as business and co-workers, as everything in between. And they are just letting the jukebox play and hours will pass of them enjoying because they don't get tired. There's no tired feet. None of that. And the bar filters out eventually, leaving just the four of them. Conversation happens, of course, while they dance. And sometimes the dancing is secondary to the conversation. But the dancing is still constant throughout the night until the jukebox plays its last song out of all the songs they've had, maybe even looped a couple of times. And the realization that you've had a night together of just genuine camaraderie comes to an end. The four of you will go about your nights and everybody will go home to reconvene the following evening. But there's no need to bring up serious discussions when a night like that happens because a night like that has never happened. The night passes. Rouse, check everybody. I want to ask, does Ava come back to Crowley's? Or does she go back <laughs> to the septic tank? Uh, I would go back to Crowley's because screw that septic tank. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Every uh, Dakota uh, goes okay. up in a hunger, but that's, I mean, you were pretty high as, I mean, everybody reels, you know, wakes up not any hungrier beyond Dakota. <clears throat> Dakota, what were you at, a two or a one? I was just at one. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're fine. Because I've been a little last time. Yeah, well, the good. pole is certainly there and, and you wake up to a little bit hungrier feeling nothing that you haven't managed in the past. Uh, ignoring the hearts, which are needed for um yep, level of powers and stuff. Yeah, ignoring the hearts, which I can dip into if I need to. I literally only have nine meat left. Okay, so how much are you going to eat down? Are you going to bring down uh, another... That, that's after eating two to bring it down to one. Right. Okay, so you can eat another... Okay, so you ate two to bring it to nine and you're yeah. at one. Yeah, gotcha. so I've got no nine problem. left. The, the, the fridge is looking a little bit bare. Yeah, it's getting there. But you all will reconvene at Ollie's place and as you all enter Ollie's bar, um, you all hear the music outside. That's the first thing that greets you. No longer is it the chatter of, uh, of, of the bar goers, but the music that can he heard on the other side of the door. And as you open, it's almost a warm greeting. And it really does add this kind of more home-like feel to the place, lived in, comfortable. And you will all slowly convene one after the other. If there's any uh, individual scenes people are looking for specifically before the four of you get together uh, and have conversations about whether needles, the church, or, or the next steps that you want to take, um, let me know now because this is a time where we can stagger arrivals and meets to make sure moments happen while you have the time to have them happen. I am interested in the Crowley Ava wake you up. Will this have, morning. The two of you will have time together, obviously, because you, you spent the night in the same place. So you'll wake up uh, around the same time. Actually, Crowley wakes up an hour earlier. Uh, and then obviously Ava will wake up. So you'll have time together. Leaving Dakota and Ollie, obviously, to have some time as well if you'd like some. Um, it has been a couple of nights since you've seen Eric as well. Keep that in mind. But okay. uh, we will open with a, the most immediate of the first, of the two. Um, it will be uh, Crowley and Ava, since Crowley will be awake before any other kindred usually in the city beyond maybe you know, beyond a couple maybe uh, that wake up at this hour. So Ava, as you as you wake up again when you when you lie to sleep, it's it's instantaneous. It feels like you've blinked. Uh, you essentially brush the skirts of death and wake again. And Crowley is there watering a plant near a windowsill. Hey, Leslie, Ben. Good evening. <clears throat> Sun's just gone down. I was waiting for you. How was last night? It was fun, actually. A lot of fun. That was a nice surprise. Is that something uh, you plan to do with Dakota, or is that just a spontaneous thing? I would like to take some credit, but honestly, it was Dakota's plan. All I did was help out. <sighs> that warms my cold heart. It does. I'm very happy to hear that. I think it was a really nice touch to the bar. Is she in, uh, Ollie, um... Seems to be getting pretty serious, actually. Oh, wow. Okay. That's good. So yes. she's starting to pull her back. Though I can imagine it going rather slow 
um, just because I think this is a new thing for Dakota especially. So sometimes they need a little bump, a little nudge. So that's where we come in. <laughs> we can help them out. And who do you turn to when you need a bump? Crowley's just genuinely got a cup of tea. This is actually like in the... <laughs> yeah, just um well I I don't know. I don't know really. I don't <laughs> I don't usually need a bump. <laughs> really? It's not me so much. Yeah. Well, if you ever need a bump, feel free to uh hit me up. Oh, Crowley. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> that Ava charm spilling over and just can't help herself. But the two of you eventually make your way to the bar uh, then from there? Um, yes. I will let him know about the uh, the social media stalking. Um, okay. So I did a little uh, reconning at Eric's on Facebook, and I did find your daughter. Um, I also found your other daughter and your wife. Pretty easy to, to locate them after finding her. Yeah, they're all, uh, well connected on the social network. I, uh, I kind of put a line out for all three as in. That's Center probably Request smart. Just in case we don't hear from Emily, we can at least maybe hear from one of the others. But I'll have to check in on that at some point to see if any of them did add Eric. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I really appreciate it. Of course. It means and as a you lot. make your way. Oh, sorry, go ahead. It means a lot. Anything I can do to help, I'm just... I want to help you in this, Crowley. Crowley's going to, like, put his hand across as he's driving and, like, squeeze at Ava's hand. And on that uh, gentle squeeze, we'll fade out and we'll fade in to Dakota walking into a bar before the other two show up. Again, the music's the first thing that greets you as I describe. Um... Out front, you see Haley, actually. As well as uh, you can see Grant in the back, but she's making drinks for people up front. Uh, she sees you and she smiles. Hey, um, I, I wave. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. I forgot your name. I follow in right uh, behind her. You what? Uh, I follow in right behind her. Sure. I'm D I'm Dakota. And she uh, sees Ollie. Good to see you. Uh, do I? Should I call you like? Mr. Hopkins now? I don't know. How, like, what, do no, you really give a always, shit? Ollie's fine. All right. Good to see Ollie. You see, you hear Grant from the background. Hey, you two. Hey, Grant. I kind of walk to the back, uh, giving them a second if they, if anything wants to happen there. Yeah. I take a seat. I take my seat. Yeah, you take bar. your seat. She's like, do you drink anything in particular? No. But I enjoy peeling the label. Something other than Smirnoff, please? Oh, Smirnoff, the fuck? Oh. Right? And she turns fuck? around. <laughs> yes! Yes! And I, like, slam my hands, like, finally! Somebody understands my pain! Oh, uh, she's like, well, if you're just looking to peel a label, I mean, she, she, she's like, it's not good beer, but the label's kind of fun. And she just grabs a Coors. Perfect. And she just Thank plops you. a Coors in front of you. <clears throat> hear that, Grant? I'm a Coors girl now. <laughs> <laughs> now her favorite's uh, Smirnoff, raspberry. I look at Haley as if like she I just could goes, probably kill him. <laughs> she shakes his head. She's like, uh, he's a nice enough guy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> and I go to peeling my label. <laughs> yeah, and you can go to peeling your label. Um, if you ask her, if you, unless you engage with her specifically, she gives you your space. You, you kind of give off that I want my space vibe. I have a question. Knowing what I know, I assume that she probably is in like a tank top, like shows her tats off and those kind of yeah. things. Oh yeah, absolutely. Does she have bruising on her body? Uh, wits awareness? It's 
Uh, one. Not that you can see. Okay, great. That's all. I sit here and drink and I try to smile politely and not be awkward. Yeah, no, and she gives you she gives you like light conversation if it seems like it's something you want, but knowing Dakota and knowing how Haley is, she's super, super just like kind of, hey, I'll have me here if you want to chat. If you need a if you need a new label, she'll bring one over. Cool. I feel bad wasting all the beer, so I probably start asking for empty bottles at some point. <laughs> oh, recycle. Uh, uh, but but eventually, like you know, after you peel a few labels and you have some time, is there any t- conversation Ollie and Dakota want to have before uh, the coterie kind of reconvenes? If not, we can just push forward. Uh, I don't think there's anything like that's super pressing. Um, okay, cool. I think it's stuff that you would probably expect in that situation. Yep. And so after about an hour or so, uh, through the front door, Ava and Crowley walk through and, and kind of gets together. There might be some, like I said, uh, the, the patrons all say hi to Ava. Um, most of them know your name. Uh, and they just kind of wave at you and they don't really bother you too much uh, unless you are specifically looking to have them adore you. But otherwise, uh, the four of you will, will all file your way into the back. The voice in the back of your head is gone. Well, that voice is. Yeah. That. <laughs> but yeah, eventually I'll fall of your fire, file your way into the back where there's peace and quiet. Well, privacy at least. Also, another good use of the jukebox. Yeah, People it's, can't it's hear a you talk super over a good jukebox. white noise generator out there. Smart. It really is. It's actually, it's multi-purpose in many ways. Yep. I like it. I like it a lot. So, uh. He's just saving up for it. You cash in on some of that uh, the truckload of gold you got there, man. <laughs> Dakota had a better idea. Yeah, all right. I okay. gave it a new home. Well, it looks good. It's... I I know, and um, I a new home. <clears throat> I went shopping. I've been shopping for a while, and that one uh, is the one that just seemed bright. All right, I like it. Yeah, it's good. Nice addition. Yeah, there's definitely uh, window shopping involved. Yep. <laughs> it wouldn't, um, if anybody came to visit, it wouldn't raise any suspicion of where it came uh, from or anything, would it? I, it's it's just a jukebox. There are, I'm sure. You sure. can read Crowley's like face. I mean, <laughs> jukeboxes are. The code is a bad liar. Ability is god awful. Yep, by <laughs> manipulation one, you can read Crowley like a book. Uh, yeah, so this I... is this is why young Ollie went to jail because he used to do this a lot. B and E's were kind of his thing. So he just puts his hands up. I don't know anything, but if you happen to find an itch to repaint it or cover up some scratches. <laughs> then I encourage oh. you to do so if you feel as if it's going to rouse some suspicion. You know what? I might just pop out and get some, like, uh, enamel paint or something. Uh, it's got, there's definitely some scratches that need... Uh, wait, wait, art is... It, Ava's an artist, right? That's, you, that's like, <laughs> you when you're not... I mean... Sure, a retro project would be something yeah. I'd be happy to take on. Is it, is it like, a vintage... Is vintage, vintage project. Yeah, I put like it a... in the Discord on the Roll for Discord. Oh, I didn't even. Yeah, you can actually take a look at what it looks like. Yeah, I sent. I think I sent it yes, to you, Matt. I, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Boxes are not as common as you think, Dakota. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, the modern day, so people might wait, notice. Wait, wait, wait. Crowley's actually a little bit because he's like, G boxes aren't common anymore. No, uh, they're not. <laughs> not very not uncommon. Really. Oh, okay, yeah. Every American TV show I've seen has a jukebox in it. You know, they, are they, you they, watching? Happy days or old cheers. shows. Cheers. Cheers. Like, like, cheers. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think maybe anyway. just a, a, a fresh, a fresh coat a fresh, of paint. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll we'll make it. We'll spruce it up. Yeah. Ollie, this is not your typical level of suspicion. These people are not acting like they robbed some local hole in the yeah, warm wall no. place. <laughs> Kindred. If it was a hole in the wall place, there shouldn't be this worry. But there is a lot of like, okay, should we I... gotta. <laughs> we should probably so get like, some okay, paint so... on that, like last <laughs> night. <laughs> I think, I think you, should, you should probably bear noting that Ollie is very grateful, especially if Dakota oh, brought it in, like because Dakota brought it in. But if it was someone else, you'd be like, okay, you fucking fess up, you did something wrong. But because Dakota <laughs> did it, he's like turning a blind eye and letting. Yeah, he's trying to just be like. Eh. So right. He. 
I will likely bring it into the back and tell them to start the restoration immediately. Okay, if yeah, you, yeah, it has <laughs> night, yeah. You just have to like pretend it's heavy. Uh, oh God, yeah. uh, it's so heavy. Uh. <laughs> and he's like dragging it past everybody uh, mm -hmm. and get into the back room and uh, you want to get it worked on. There's actually, when you unplug it, there's a, a, a genuine like, oh, kind of like upsetness of the, in the room that the music is dead. And now that the music is missing, it is noticeable. They only mm -hmm. hear like the sports on the TV, the couple TVs you might even have. Other than okay. that, no music. That, yeah, it, it, it's all of a sudden like TV. a, it's like the soul was ripped from the bar yeah, out of yeah. nowhere. Uh, I'll probably note like sticky buttons. Uh, we're going to get it worked on and um, round of brews on me. Oh, well, well, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And uh, everybody seems fine. And uh, Haley hey, starts Ava, grabbing Ava, Ava, drink. Why don't you sing the Masson? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm talented in many ways, but singing uh, sure. is not Ava, always. Ava, uh, you don't have to do this in any way. And it would be very obvious. But I'm saying even we, you could you could go out there and screech. But as long as you had <laughs> awe on. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't care. <laughs> I'm sure the round of drinks will distract them for now because I'm the one who's doing the uh, repainting of this jukebox anyway. So this, a... this will be a couple of nights project, but I'm just going to require uh, essentially a, um, uh, well, I'm, I'm tempted to call it Dex, but it's not Dex. Let's just call it uh, intelligence, I guess. Yeah, we'll call it intelligence craft. I guess like you're replacing Definitely bits crap. and stuff, you'd be like machining different bits, whatever. And yeah, yeah, you have to pull stuff off, paint it, put it yeah. back on, yeah. And it's a project that is relatively well done. You change the colors out. You're able to find, um, able to find old, maybe in uh, in old dumps, old jukeboxes of, of similar make and model of different colors. You don't necessarily go out on your own, but you have people that you can call on, retainers of yours, that can go out and do it for you. And they do return after a couple of nights of, of, uh, of part hunting. And you're able to, while maintaining the same retro feel and, and look of it, it is something very much out of a very specific era. You change it to the colors and stuff definitely don't match what it once looked like. Buns that have had scratches or chips on it are replaced with ones that don't. The red is replaced with kind of a, a bluish color. And it's enough to look different. Again, it's still a retro jukebox that is not really all that common nowadays, but still... It definitely doesn't look anything like it. Yeah. And so it'll go back out front and the soul returns to the bar. The only thing Just, you can't really replace easily are the songs that it plays. Right. That you'd have mm. to look online, make an eBay yeah. style kind of thing. And that runs its own risks, obviously, especially in technology nowadays and, and second inquisition concerns. You'd have to have somebody else do it for you of the mortal variety. Eric might be a good contender for that. Um, if it's if it's a part, can we change the uh, the order of forty fives and and yeah, that you could easily crack that open and switch the order okay. of the forty fives. You switch the order of the uh, I think they use A tracks. I can't remember whatever they use the forty fives. Like what are they? I was about like, to say the forty fives are the the this, smaller this. size. Oh, okay, yeah. then yeah, that's super easy to switch out, and then you just have to manually pull the pieces. I mean, of paper technically, I guess back. we could go to any record store and buy. A set of forty five. Yeah, that's true. Actually, them. you could go hunting for music into an actual into you an actual what? thing. You know, if it, it honestly, fun. if we didn't have to worry about copyright, I'd say give me the list of songs. I'd still say give me the list of songs because I can at least verbally say this song is playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> I would say uh, that one of the reasons Dakota picked this jukebox is because it had Hound Dog on it. Yeah, like, it I was just that Hound thing, Dog's you know, and like, anywhere. but but yeah, I could. Um... Crowley will definitely recommend you get more Bowie on there. <laughs> we can get some Bowie. Okay. Yeah, Bowie's always a good This thing. is, I have an idea for this. I have an idea, Mathis, for this. Okay, um, cool. Yeah. Well, we can until, work on that. Until we get that, I just want to switch it just in case someone comes in and's like, my old favorite was this one. Yeah. Just for reasons. <laughs> right, of course. Uh, but absolutely. And But but eventually, like, after the project is done, I just want to make sure kind of surface level stuff is taken care of. I do, the Coterie does need to get together in discussion of the next steps and what you're looking to do next oh, needs good. to happen, especially with what information has been learned. So eventually... Yeah. In the back of the kitchen with the sounds of music in the background you can have your conversation you said it's been a few days right it will say it's been like two nights since crowley's church visit okay then i am um i'm probably getting antsy enough that i even go out as far as looking for um any of the ventures that i can like mr jackson mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You really um, are like, I'm putting a line out. You want, you need to talk to them. You've, you've been waiting for a long time. Yeah. I need to talk to them now. So we'll say you mm -hmm. put a line out again, a more urgent one in between those two, uh, in, in those two nights. But yes. the Coterie still want, uh, needs to get together before that happens. So basically at this point, we don't have information from the Venture. From the Venture, have you have information from Crowley on Needles, the church in that area. Um, beyond that, I'm trying to think what else I know. I mean, I don't know Still why. waiting um, also on the line from Snitch. From yes, Apple you put a rat out at the end of last episode. <laughs> if that's something you'd rather wait to happen uh, from to hear from one of them, uh, we can definitely do a scene. Uh, we can definitely push forward another couple nights when one of the two of them gets back to you. I do have something that we can do. Um, small, but Ollie, um, your newfound ab um, ability to communicate with animals has piqued my interest. Princess Bella has been around keeping rats off the docks and sometimes away from the bar, but she might be a great candidate to go check out the neighborhood in Chinatown. The problem is, I can't talk to her. Yeah, no, I see where you're going with this. It, um, my previous conversations probably go down the same way. So if you can get her, then I can start making that happen. I I can get her. Um, well, yeah. You know what? We have, I would say that she and I only check in rarely, but yeah. maybe I put something like, uh, we have a sign, just like put something outside the back door of Ollie's place near yeah. the dumpster or something. Uh, okay, something sure, to, sure, sure. To, to, to tell her to stick around. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and when she does, if she does come around. Yeah. Oh, okay. My, my, my apologies. Okay. So actually when Dakota goes, I would like to have a scene with Ollie. Something that I actually meant to do earlier and I completely yeah. forgot about. My bad. Dakota steps away. She's like, yeah, uh, you know, I'm gonna go take care. I'll try to get uh, Princess Bella around. Almost as she, immediately as she steps away and she's out of sight and you're left alone, you hear words. Well, you hear a word. Butcher. I will turn to determine where I've heard it. You look behind you, and standing there is a familiar face. How familiar? Rudy familiar. Yeah. Rudy. You wish to speak with Snitch. We will speak in his stead. Well. It has been some that? time. Why, why, why are you speaking for Snitch? Snitch is occupied with Amarillo politics. Very well. Didn't realize that he was letting another clan intermingle in Nosferatu potential, but that's fine. If he feels that he trusts you that much, more than I do, but... <clears throat> You will need to let these go, Butcher. At a long fucking time. Grudges serve you no good. You could have been honest and there would have been no grudge. Honestly, you could have, honest have lost your trust as well, Butcher. Do not lie to yourself. Now that I'm a kindred, honesty goes a long way. And there's some things that you've said to me in recent past that I just do not care for. Like when I asked about my mother and my father, and when he could have just gave me a straight answer, you said, why? Because it should not matter. But it, it does to me. Why? Why does it matter to you what I know? Because you are emotional. And you are out of touch. Perhaps. With... And that's something that I've chosen to accept. And I don't expect to change you. 
but that's not why I called her snitch. You could still answer those things, though. If you needed an opportunity to remember, I can express it. Let you stew on it for God knows how long. But I still want to know who ghouled my mother. Because I know that you had ghouled my father. And you don't have to tell me, but I'll figure it out. Because the things have come to light. And either I'm being punished, or someone else in the Ventrue was sort of looking out for me. The Ventrue who ghouled your mother was not any Ventrue you know. Have I never met them before? If you have, I have not made been aware, not made aware of it. It was a power play that failed, Butcher. Your mother became useless to the cause. A venture seeking position that they were unable to attain. Rudy, what's a revenant? Why? you speak those words because I found out about it recently then why are you asking because I want to know if I was one no you were never a revenant what about my son could he be one my knowledge on how revenants are created are myths conflicting I am unsure He is in the safe hands of the Camarilla, however, though if he shows signs, we will know. Could I, um, could I determine if he was lying to me there, by chance, about me being a revenant? Yeah, you can always make a roll. Um, wits in sight, obviously. Can I rouse for this? Yeah, plus one. You gotta rouse check it though. Okay, you don't gain hunger. Four successes. You are not convinced that he's being 100% honest. Okay. All right. Let's get in. Um, why are you choosing not to tell me about my mother's sire or whatever? Because, you call it? She, as I said, the Ventru sire her failed. Their power play forgotten. They simply reside in Chicago now. If I was to tell you their name, would that help you? Would you feel closure? There would be no face. You've never met them. I want to know about my mother. She was sired by a young Ventru by the name of Emmy. Emmy? No, I don't know her. No, you do not. Most don't anymore. Mm. And she's in Chicago? She is. She's not what you would expect, understand, if you go looking for her. Hmm. I find that that's pretty true about just about everyone. That's fair. Well, the reason that I called Snitch. One of my coterie members, Crowley. His yes, daughter's I know gone, of him. His daughter's gone missing. A familiar know, story. It's a part of previous life, yada yada. I've heard you preach on about it. I understand. But I know where he's coming from, and I know that he needs help right now. Or he's going to fuck up and do something stupid, just like I would have done. I need to know where she is in Chicago. I need to know where she is. Because I know she's here. 
Understood. And I got a, I got an idea who's got her. Any information you have would make the search easier. I can't for the life of me remember the name of of the of of that person. Uh the Lasan it's not Lasambra, it's um Giovanni. Giovanni. The Giovanni mm. Council yeah. member. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Oh, the Giovanni Council member. Hang on, I got him written down in here. What was his name? I never we remember. We killed Top his ghoul. Yeah. Well Crowley did. Yeah. Until then, you say his name, and you yeah. will continue the conversation. He's uh, you just said count. you said he's oh he's looking for him. Yeah, I say that um, it's believed that she is held by the Anarch Council member who is a Giovanni, um, or at least I'm I'm basically echoing what you're re you're reiterating basically whatever Crowley told you. Yeah. 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 And what do you believe he will do if he doesn't receive any information at a reasonable time? He's an Anarch. He's using the girl as leverage, and he's using Crowley as the same. And everybody wants this bar for more than one reason. They're shifting up into Anarch or into Vendry territory, and Anarchs want to extend their, their claim, their presence, and their control. They're going to make plays against the Camarilla. And I certainly know that the prince wouldn't care for that, even though it's likely not our momentary concern. I think it's going to have a little bit of bite back. And even though Crowley is new here, and everywhere he goes, Torch falls and the place goes up in fire. He's got some neat, neat abilities that I think would be best utilized if on the home team, if you get what I'm saying. They are dangerous abilities, Butcher. Yeah. I'll let him lead you to believe otherwise. They are not natural as mine. Skirts similar as his. They rip and tear at your soul. He speaks beyond what I am able to. It's unnatural. Yeah, I've seen some similar shit coming right out of Vanessa's. And I have to say that I don't particularly care for it. I try to stick away from it as much as I can. But because it fucked me up so bad, witnessing it the last time is why I'm going for help now. Because I don't want someone else, especially an Anarch, using him as leverage and holding those captive. And it is your intention to take this area for your own. The park, when we stretch down that far, eventually. But we're moving to the right channels. We've got an expressive permission. But I don't really know about this particular council member on the Anarchs. I don't like how he plays. It's dirty. I am willing to offer you another piece of information in a show of good faith. Rudy, you know it's not my birthday. Not a, not a single show of smirk or anything crawls across his face as he just looks at you. If your intentions are to claim territory of your own, know that you are not the only Camarilla looking for to take that as theirs. You may run into Emmy yet. Emmy? Going to the park? Territory open for grabs. An adventure down on her luck. You said down on down on her luck? I did tell you that she failed her power grab decades ago. Hmm. Where could I find this Emmy? I do not know. I do not keep tabs on her. She keeps to herself. You keep tabs on me? I have a soft spot for you. Hmm. 
One day I might forgive you. I'll forget as I get older. But Rudy, that day isn't now. And I will hold a grudge until I no longer do. Do you still wish you had died instead? No, because if I had actually died, I would have never found my fire. And I found a fire, Rudy. If you never forgive me, hearing those words are enough. And he will, as you watch, pull the shadows around him, slipping into the darkness of what little shadows are in the back. And he disappears from sight. The door swings open and Princess Bella is in Dakota's arms. I hold her out. She's probably like, Rang! <laughs> and just totally <laughs> feral. Uh, I nonchalantly plop her down on probably what is a, a cleaning, clean cooking surface. Yep, you, you, there's there's a cutting like there's that aluminum board. You put her down. She stops meowing and then she starts purring. Yeah. Uh, I I bet Ollie is gonna talk to you. Something new. I look at Ollie very excited and <laughs> for this. I um I'm gonna look around, um, sort of like a peace offering kind of thing. Uh grab one of the the cans uh from a you know, like a, a tuna melt and yeah, I'll sure. <laughs> crack the can, drain off the juice, and you the, the minute you hear that move, the cat springs to action, walks over, starts yeah. like murr, murr, murr. and um I'm gonna hit her with some feral whispers. All right, make that roll, baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, animalism. Feral whispers. Got it. Two successes. Two successes. Is it two or three that you need? Um, I think it's just two. Just two? Do you need a rouse check? Two. Is it a rouse? Um, it is not. It's a rouse check unless you're talking to your famulus, right? Yeah, no, it's 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 not free. Okay, barrel whispers. Yep, rouse me. Rouse. Yep. Hunger goes up. For the animal, blah, blah, blah. We need a Mimi meow three. right about now. I know. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mimi, you were so chatty last time. <laughs> right. I know. I'm like trying to have her channel. I'm giving, you, I'm giving you your moment. <laughs> it's because you're petting her. She only like tries to get attention when you're not petting her. Yeah. So uh, she's eating. She starts. Uh, do you let her lick at the tuna when you cast it? Is that like when you put it down yeah. and you cast yeah. barrel whispers? And she leans down. And she she does that whole purr purr eat thing. So she's like, <laughs> and she's yeah. eating the tuna. That was surprisingly accurate. Yeah. I have cats, dude. <laughs> they yeah they eat and purr and can't breathe yeah, all at the same can't. time. It's yeah. just like yeah they get too excited. Then <clears throat> I will um, what do you say? Um. Is she saying anything first, or she's, do I have to? She's eating. It? You you have to act like you yeah. You activate the feral whispers, and okay. again, you can feel the blood and the connection with the animal on this bestial primal level. Okay, um, then I will ask her if it's good. And she just uh, takes a moment. She like finishes swallowing and like licks her chops a little bit, cleans her face, and she looks over. Yes, very. No, and goes back to eating. <laughs> good. Uh, I'll kind of glance up and give give her the thumbs up. Dakota's trying not to like explode in excitement. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes back to eating, unless you ask her. Where do you hang out mostly? Mother's boat. <laughs> you like it there? You get a lot of, a lot of play. You find a lot of food. Plenty to hunt. Would you like if she left something more for you? Mm, yes. What is it? I thought you were going to give me more. <laughs> <laughs> she just goes back to licking now the rest of the can. Now it's like getting the last morsels. You can hear the can getting dragged across the aluminum top as she's like really getting in there. I looked at Dakota. She says she would like some more food. And nip. I look at her like, you druggy bitch. 
<laughs> she's just purring. <laughs> she walk, you, you say that's yours. She purrs. She walks over and just rubs up against you and then hops up onto your shoulder. <clears throat> All right, I've got her. She's, uh, we're, we're conversating. Great about Chinatown. Okay, um, how do I say that to a cat, though? Because she probably can't read signs. Uh, we could drop her off. Okay. Nearby. Um, I just thought maybe she'd scoop the area. Tell us what she came back with. Okay, um. Uh, we, so I know the, the block, the radius that they're in. Mm-hmm. Do we know any landmarks in that area? Anything we can tell? Uh, it's not. There's not really any like landmarks in the area so so much. But you know the the block area and, and whatnot. And uh... got it. Okay. I know what she's looking for. If they're moving people, she's looking for people, imprisoned people, people in I don't know large quantity. And there's a possibility they're moving them underground. Hmm. Well, you have to remember if we put her underground, the Nosferatu feed underground, and they could just <laughs> snatch her up and have a snack. Ask her if she'd be interested in such a thing. Might as well. Sure. Princess Bella, we're yes. looking for someone. <laughs> we need your help. Okay. We need you to go through a part of town to see if there are people that are imprisoned. Do you know what that means? Do you know what it means to be imprisoned or caged? Caged. There are people that are caged. Kenneled people. Kenneled people, yeah and they're being hurt, particularly women. And they need help, and we have to find them. Find the kenneled people. We have to find the kenneled people. I need you to make me a persuasion. Uh, I believe it's animalism check. Let me double check. Sorry, charisma animalism. To persuade a cat to do something. Or persuade okay. an animal to do something. I'm gonna... Dakota's cat no, is excessively smart compared to the ones that... What was your previous character called, Dakota? The the old woman? Ida. Ida yeah, Ida's yeah. cats? When I talked to Ida's cats, they were so dumb. <laughs> well, this is a ghouled cat that's been ghouled for yep. a little while as well. Well, okay, so well for like wanted, 10 years. You said you just wanted to flat charisma. Can, uh, charisma animalism. Okay, um, how do I... Roll you click animalism like and then it'll be like charisma. Sorry, you click um the So what how many so it's just uh yeah, you click on your discipline exactly. How many you got two, right? Two in animalism? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's two plus your charisma. And I, I roused, so Okay, so plus an additional one. Right, but if I click the discipline, it's gonna rouse again. That's fine, ignore it. No, it'll oh, only well, rouse if you hit the this. rouse check button. There's another button for the It's to the side. Yeah. Discipline. There. Got it. And one. Two successes. Okay. Uh, and you say, she, and she go, yes, find the kenneled people. And she, she, uh, she's starting to like give herself a bath on on her shoulder, like licking her paw. And she's like, mm, fine. There'll be more food, more cans like that. Fine. Is that okay? Did you need anything else? I mean, she's not, she's a cat. So, uh, you uh, do you say need anything else? And she goes, yeah. no. Okay. She pops okay. off the shoulder and then looks back to you. Now, um, make sure tell her to take her time and be safe. Be safe. Tell her to be safe. I point to her. Your mom says, "Take your time. Be safe." She be and when you say that, she actually will walk back over to Dakota and just like swirl between the legs a couple times, and then she'll uh walk out the, the uh, head out the door. She understands. Man, that is cool. I don't know how long she's going to be gone, but I told her that she needed to find caged people. She didn't know what imprisonment meant. Um, you know, it 
to start. This is worse gonna happen, right? Well, uh, we stumble into what we're looking for, but also a different situation entirely. Who knows how many caged people are actually in, sh well, Chinatown. It's true, but that area specifically, I don't know, just... Can I wind that back and make sure that I, I, I give her an idea of the area? Of that yeah, yeah, we'll for. say you try, to, you try to impart an idea of the area she's trying to get to as best you can, and she seems to understand the best a cat might. You know, like go to the underpass with yeah. this you, you, thing you and pass through tell her to go. Yeah, yeah you, you give the best directions you can. But you yeah. keep in mind, she's also slightly more intelligent than your average cat, and finding her way back is not going to be all that difficult. Sure. She's going to have some sort of like mini Homeward Bound mission. Like she's yeah, going she's got like across a, a Chicago, doing session. the recon, coming back. You do, you yeah, do, coming back, yeah. That's when you go to Mouse Guard and you just do a one-off session. <laughs> yeah. As, uh, the Bella Chronicles the of Princess Bella. Except yeah, in the World exactly. of Darkness setting, so it's much darker. Oh, um, yeah, it's way worse. I know, you know, it's funny. We haven't played a lot with these. I guess I should build character sheets eventually for these creatures, for all, for all, like yeah, all these animals. There's like easy famulus rules you can look up. Super simple. And I guess maybe I should know this, but did they, for having, because they drink the blood, do they gain any abilities? Yeah, first level Powers? of the highest, I believe. Which would be fort. First level of your choice, if it's anything like ghouls, because you they. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you're choice. right. First, first level, level of your choice. Good choice. They do gain increased healing, but there's no way to mechanically note that. Mechan yeah, right. there's no way to actually, like, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Like, um, they can't really heal super fast because they've still got, like, your blood points, but they just heal naturally a little bit faster. Yeah, oh yeah. I, I would say it's fortitude. She got 11 lies, not just 9, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She'll have fortitude 1, though, which means, like, she'll get, what, plus 1 health? Or um, plus endowed 1 with dominate. supernatural. Yeah, that would be resilience. They use a constriction, their physical resolve, yeah. Fort rating to their health track. Which, to be um, fair, is probably good because a cat probably only has like two or three health. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's the one that probably makes the most sense. I'm looking up right now just to make double sure. Just, yep, yeah, just that she's hardy as hell is uh, what I'm interested in. She's that cat that keeps coming back, you know what I'm saying? I probably also, um, I'll probably tell Dakota since since she's left that I just that Rudy Rudy was literally just here. What? Yeah, yeah. He did his Lissombra thing with uh, with the shadows again. Does he hang out here? I don't think it does. Often? No, but I know he keeps tabs. So anywhere there's a shadow, he probably has heard or seen something. He said he has a soft spot for me. That's kind of weird. Yeah, I kind of think he sees himself like a dad. But you don't like him. No, I, I have a I have a lot of qualms with Rudy and the things that he's done, but the older I get as a kindred, the more I see the reasoning that he's done what he's done. So you do like him. I don't know. I don't know what I like about Rudy right now, but all I know is that it's, he's, he's still with the prince. He's with Snitch and he's with Vanessa. How much do you think he knows on the, about what goes on here? I think he knows a fair amount. And that's why I'm trying to secure a different place. What's going to stop him from creeping in the shadows there? Lots of light. <sighs> okay. If there's no shadows, he can't do tricky shit. He'll have to take down the lights first. And then, well, at any rate, he keeps using his abilities that are banned. Last I checked, that's still illegal. True. No. I don't think that's going to fly with the prince, considering what we know, but you get what I'm saying. Either way, he has news about Crowley's kid, or at least he can help get news about Crowley's kid. Well, then, as much as distaste as you have for him, <clears throat> he will be useful. Also, he told me who sired my mother. And I think he just lied to me about me being a revenant. Or at least as much as he knows about revenants. 
Okay, who sired your mother? A true, one that I've never met. I'm guessing a woman, pretty sure, he's, pretty sure he said she, but her name is Emmy. And something happened, some sort of deal went went awry or went wrong, and she fell out of the good graces of the rest of the Ventru. And this is where it sort of ties in with us. Apparently, she is also vying for the park. She okay. wants Brighton as well. Well, then maybe we should speak with her. There's potentially of territory there, and an old Egypt could put us a step ahead of this baron. Well, I think we should probably let everybody know. Are they are they still here? They're on their way. And okay. we'll say, you know, are oh, they are they still here? And a few minutes later, through the back door, Ava and Crowley step through. Hmm. Good. Good, good, good. I'll uh, I'll make sure to call Dakota in and let him know that we put some things into motion. Uh, that we have a cat stalking out Chinatown. Good. Um, also, that there is another, there's there's another kindred that's looking for Brighton. My favorite Lissandra made him pop in. He folded in with his traditional butcher. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, Rudy. Yeah, Rudy. Right. Right, he knows about you, though, Crowley. He seems very well informed. Rudy knows a little bit about everything, and as a Lissambra, he happens to think that your powers are relatively dangerous. I mean, I keep saying that every time I use them. Yeah, well... His powers are also dangerous. Yeah, he doesn't seem to think so. You know that whole thing where, like, they go into the shadow and they appear somewhere else? They're literally, like, traveling at the edge of the abyss when they do that. It's really dangerous. Yeah, well, he, uh, he's mastered it. So he comes and goes as he pleases. Is there so a way dangerous. to make it so that that can't happen here? Oh, yeah. Uh, you just use a really powerful light bulb. Kind of like so just... fingers and point. No, light. genuinely, genuinely. None of those powers work if there ain't shadows around. None of them work in like areas of light. So I carry a powerful torch around at all times. Like, Charlie okay. goes around to his back. He's just got like a mag light like at his back in his belt at all times. Yeah. Well, that's useful, but not topic of conversation at the moment. Handling Rudy is is, is a didn't you say a that he was a problem. bastard not to trust him and that he was yeah. due his uh, you know yeah, but he I think he thinks that he's like my dad or something, and he keeps looking in on me and he what keeps is it with his coterie and daddy issues? <laughs> Look, everyone's got daddy issues. Welcome to fucking Chicago, okay? Everybody's a deadbeat and still fucking. I look at. Dakota, I look at Ollie, I look at Dakota, I look at... Right. We can't have kids. And that ain't happening anyway. We're dead. Okay! More <laughs> to the point, we still have to speak with the Bintru. Do we have a meeting with them yet? If we give the Baron more time, we are... And now a second player on board. This... this what yes. was her name? Emmy. Who is... That oh, rings Emmy. a bell for Crowley. Kid, that too. Blonde. Kind of cute. You have no idea creepy. if she's a kid. <laughs> a kid? Know. I know she's a Ventro named Emmy, and she's making a, a she's okay, making a move. Okay, well, she's a kid. About that tall, blonde, kind of cute, bit creepy. All you said she was a kindred. Her. Yeah, a kindred. Yeah, that's that's what I was told. Of yeah, yeah, a kid, kindred, kindred, kindred. That is weather. super. By the way, Crowley, um, you kind of saying it out loud now and would spark, but for everybody else, it would just immediately spark. That is super illegal. Siring a child is against so many laws. <laughs> I've done a lot of illegal stuff. It doesn't really fit. Oh, yeah, but this is what, it's illegal, sire, but, the thing is with siring a child, and one of the reasons it's mega, mega bad is because they don't really mentally develop after that. There's no, hmm. they are permanently a kid. So if they've lived decades, uh, they've somehow adapted, but they're still like a child in their mind. I thought it's about very this. bizarre. I thought about this, and the only way that they adapt is if they're groomed. But even then, they have the emotional swings that they can't control. Yeah, they have tantrums. Yeah. Giving into the beast is super dangerous if you have a kid kindred, because that's super easy to give into. Wassailing is almost always 
expected. Oh, so you're telling me we're vying for this spot against a kid kindred? Really? Like an older kindred. At least decades older than us. Yeah, but they're still a kid. Ellie, you, you met them. How do you know them? I know everyone. No, stop no, being don't. cheeky. How do you, you fucking know her? But it's my most endearing quality. I'm well, at I'm... I'm at the O9. Where? Uh, with Needles. I'm chatting to her. She's a friend. Of needles. Oh, before we write, um, went shopping. Oh. Right, yeah. Does Needles know that she's clearly scoping his space? I mean, I don't know what they, talk they were about. chatting. I didn't listen in on the conversation. Well, Emmy was apparently the one that ghouled my mother. Well, no shit. Okay, what? that just got weird. Maybe we should know. speak with her. Yeah. I can this go talk weird. to Needles and chase around. That what would if be good. We right. Put our eyes on the church. Uh, I don't really want to be scoping out Needles. He's a friend. It's not Needles. I'm talking about her. Yeah, well, it's Needles' it's church. Is she staying there? I don't know. Well, the long and the short of it is that that is presenting a new face into the fold, one that I've never met and one that's been around me, at least since my conception. Also, still not any clearer on that whole Revenant thing. Swore up and down that I wasn't or that he didn't know much outside of myths. I can smell bullshit, though. So, your quote-unquote, like, Kindred grandfather is Rudy, and your kindred grandmother is Emmy, a ten-year-old child. Yeah, it gets weird, okay? Yeah. There's yeah, lots of familial weird. issues. Fine. But Rudy seemed to happen to know about the Giovanni, at least enough. And he can get uh, the I shakedown. I mean, he is on the Anarch Council, so I'm pretty sure that most people will know about him who are, you know, powerful. Well, Rudy came to speak for Snitch. Rudy also happens to know about a particular... Well, isn't Rudy La Sombra and Snitches? Yes. Rudy's on the inside of a need-to-know basis circle. Oh, right, the, um... Yeah, the sandwich circle. circle. Right. The sand mm -hmm. Exactly. So... <clears throat> he's still mad that I'm mad at him. He wants me to drop it. He wanted to share some information. He's hoping that I'm tired of being mad at him. And I told him maybe one day, but that day's not now. So he let loose the information about Emmy because he knew that, knew that I was curious. And he said that he would get, get a line out and figure out about where your daughter is. He knows it's your daughter. He also right. knows that you have similar abilities. At least I didn't have to tell him what clan you were from before he already knew it. Well, if he works for the prince, well, if he works for the sandwich and the sandwich also owns the prince, then I guess they talk. Can how, he be trusted he, with the knowledge about my daughter? Yeah, hell no. Right, okay. But can you, outside of the circle, can you trust any kindred with that? Used to be able to. Chicago's a different story. Yeah. Everyone's vying to get a leg up. The only people that are currently trying to step on me are at least the people in this room, and that's as far as I know. I, and I feel I that's one of Ava's fetishes. I don't think that that's happening from Dakota. <laughs> Dakota just like Ava. <laughs> I can see that being something she does for the mares, like with a high heel boot or something. <sighs> Don't understand that one. Dakota <laughs> uh, moves past it once again and says, "If we can get needles to introduce us to her, we could work with her. If she was." actually scoping the church out and looking to take territory. What if we give her the church? Nah, the church is needles. Okay. She seems pretty attached as, as far as and I am. leave it with needles, day. but needles, okay. Maybe we just find out what she wants. Yeah. If it's negotiation is always my option of choice. I, I would agree in this case. Rudy said what, what she wanted. But she, she, went she wants the whole... A deal went south a, a couple of decades ago. It went real bad, and she fell from the favor of the Ventru. Sort of like Ava fell from the Rose Garden. Now so she's trying to get back on her feet. 
for her own territory. She's looking for her place. Did the Ventru have like a term for the inner circle, like the Rose Garden, like the boardroom or something? I have no idea. <laughs> they call themselves Blue Bloods. Right. Okay. But if she's out of favor with the Ventru. She claims one of the larger neighboring territories. She cleans it up. She's back in favor. It's not that hard. And we working with her could also gain a bit of favor, helping her get there. Problem is, is we told her Prince Charming that we would be taking it. Well, we also can't take it while my daughter's in danger, so. Frankly, I don't care about taking the park that much. I'm more interested in Emmy because I want to know about my mom. I'll be back in a bit. Carly leaves the bar. <laughs> where does Carly go so I know where you're going? I get in the van. I'm going to go down, talk to Needles, and ask about Emmy. Okay, cool. Uh, the three of you, do you just kind of like continue hanging out in the bar then for some time? I I think Ollie's going to be a little strange. That was like, the, that was a, he's been very candid about his relationship with people. Mm -hmm. And you don't really hear him talk about, like, parent stuff that often. So admitting that out loud is probably a little harder for him. So he's likely going to be a little touchy, a little edgy, and try to find things to do. Like, looks like it's time to start cleaning. It's oh, if Ollie clean. starts cleaning, I know something's wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or it's the first date. I mean, it could be either one. That's also true. Yeah. <laughs> either way, <laughs> tense. It's tense. Yeah, it's tense. tense. Um. I'll probably, if you get some distance, Dakota will come over and go, hey. You got something on your mind? Yeah. Yeah, I uh, always do. Well, you have a tendency to be pensive, but I, I mean, like, are you okay? I think as I'm gonna, as I'm gonna be. I never really got to know my mom. She died before I was even, you know, I got a couple of memories of her. We had a couple of good times. She liked the radio. She played music real loud. She loved making like cakes and stuff. She was constantly making cake, but that's like, that's what a kid knows. Can I ask you a, a question? You're kind of like, put the dishwasher down and then throw his back to it and kind of sit down. Always. Always. Say you try this child down and you get all your questions answered. Can I ask what difference it makes now? None. Rudy said the same thing. What difference does it make? But we all want to know where we come from. I guess. Some of us just want to forget where we came from. I'm just afraid that I'm going to eventually turn out like my dad. And be a terrible person. Why are you afraid addict. of that? I don't know. I don't... I don't know if your dad from the hill of beans, but uh, everybody is always afraid of turning into their parents. But if I looked at you right now and told you that I was afraid of becoming my stepfather, would you tell me that that's like completely not gonna happen? I don't think it would happen. From what you said about him, you're not like him at all. Precisely. And from what you've told me about your dad, you're nothing like him. So why do you wear the burden? I just want to know how far the apple fell from the tree. And I really hope that I'm a lot more like my adoptive father. I don't, I don't even know if he's still alive. I should look in on Pops. If 
it would make you feel better. I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say, Ali, is they, regardless of your pops, old and new, they don't define you. You're right. They, they don't define me. But they did things that very few elves have done. He... Pops put some building blocks in place. He taught me some loves. I got to learn about comics. I got to learn about family, hell. The things that I cook in my kitchen is what he used to make for me. You're never really too far from what you were. But you can change. But Leopard can't change its spots. You just adapt. New jungle. Guess. I just, um... I don't... I don't want you to become obsessed with looking into this. I want to help you in any way, and if it will bring you some kind of closure, I'll be there. I'm not saying everybody's situation is the same, you know. I, I, I kind of want you to be there too, but uh, I don't know. I, I guess I just closure. Yeah, closure. I'd like that. Then we'll try to find you some. But, uh, drop the sponge and come sit with Ava and I. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I can do that. Ava was out front this whole while. Mm -hmm. While the two of them are talking, let's have a scene out front real quick. The door opens to the bar as it does on and off throughout the night and people sit around and enjoy themselves. But as Ollie and Dakota are in the kitchen, the door does swing open and in walk safe and they see you've seen once, maybe twice. But they carry power with them and they are instantly recognizable. Kevin Jackson in his purple suit, black shirt, white tie, and his assistant that follow him stride into the bar. They walk over to a nearby uh, table and clear it out with just a look and a command, and they walk. This assistant sits down while he stands and straightens his suit a little bit and looks around, and he catches your eyes, and he smiles warmly as he recognizes you and walks over. The rose without her thorns. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, lovely to see you again. As you, Miss Heloise, and he reaches down to grab your hand and he gives it a, a gentle kiss uh, on, on the... Uh, top and places your hand down gently. Before I see uh, to business here, what do I have? Uh, why do I have the pleasure of seeing you without your coterie? Oh, the coterie, they're here. Um, Ollie's in the back. Uh, I can fetch him for you if you'd like. Oh, that would be wonderful uh, in a moment, but uh, conversation is something I've been lacking recently, and there's no better, con but no better converser of our kind than the Toreador. And he, he actually looks to him. The, seat, the seats next to you are both taken. He looks to one and he says, if you don't mind. And he gets up and leaves and he looks to the other, please. And he also gets up and he leaves the bar. He sits next to you. Uh, Haley smiles and he smiles and um, he, he just holds up his hand as to say, I'm good. And then looks to you. There's very little I know about you, Miss Heloise other than that, the past that you carry and the reputation that precedes you. I'd be remiss to not ask about more. You are not spoken of very often in the inner circles, not like you were before. What have you been up to? Oh, just making my way back into the garden. Rather slowly, of course. I don't want to just burst in as some do, but well, it's you've a lost slow your thorns, you have not allowed yourself to wit a wilt, and that is admirable. And he but smiles a, a very charming smile. I've had nothing but respect for Ventru, and I would agree that it's hard to have a good conversation nowadays and 
having somebody on the same level, I think, is always very nice. Hmm. It's funny you think we're the same level, but I do appreciate <laughs> your ambition. And he actually does give a, a very uh, a hearty chuckle at that. But it's good to see you haven't given up a lot in not. your a lot in your position, Mike. Of course not. And I would he, never give up. And he looks uh, to the back, uh, like he, where the window is, where food is served. And he looks out that way, where you can kind of see uh, Dakota and Ollie having conversation. He goes, "You keep yourself some impressive company, while you may have been thrown out. There is power still on the shoulders of a hound, and a Nosferatu attempting to make a name for himself, and." Dare I say, even maybe succeeding. They have helped me more than you can imagine. We, we make a good group, a good coterie. Well, if you don't mind going and get him. Of course, of course, Mr. Jackson. And <laughs> she, can I get you anything while you're waiting? <laughs> he smiles. <laughs> I appreciate the offer, my dear, but I just need your friends. <laughs> She tries to be as uh, suck up as possible, but she will uh, make her way to the back to go get Ollie. And that's like towards the, the end of your mm -hmm. conversation back Dakota's there. Dakota's probably grabbing Ollie's hand as you come in. She kind of like snatches knock, it knock, away. Knock, knock, mm -hmm. knock, knock. Mm -hmm. Oh, so sorry if I was interrupting something, but um, Ollie, you have a visitor, a very important one of the Venture nature. I was expecting that. Right on time. As you step out, you see him sitting at the bar. I myself as much as I can. Yeah, of course. You do what you can. You step out, and he's sitting at the bar, um, having just pleasant conversation with Haley. Uh, as he sees you come out, though, he very quickly ends the conversation, as politely as he can, but obviously like, okay, I'm done with you. And he stands up and walks over to you. Mr. Hopkins, it's a pleasure, as always. Extend a hand to shake. He shakes Jackson. yours. And I offer off to the table. Yeah, and he, he, he follows your lead. Dakota walks past and clicks a button on the jukebox. <laughs> music Starts playing some music as I uh, He join actually them looks the... back and uh, and he smiles. Good taste. <laughs> he sits in the booth with you all. Curtain gets drawn. Thank you for meeting on uh, short notice. I know that it's only been a few days since we've last seen, but um, I was hoping that you might have some news. I may. I also have or some news of myself. Uh, well, I'm sorry, what'd you say at the last part? I also have some news as well. Okay, yeah, so I thought you were going to say, uh, or that's what I thought I heard. <clears throat> so please, you start. The Anarchs to the south. There is a particular Anarch. It goes by the Baron of Brighton Park. At least that's what he's called himself. And I've from heard what I know, whispers of his obnoxiousness. He's a cheeky little kid. I think he's, I think he's being funded, but that's a different story. However, he's come in to make an offer on the bar and he expressed without much restraint and no coy manner that his hopes are to shift upward to start taking Ventru territory. Well, I'm glad to hear these words coming from your mouth, Mr. Hopkins. It means that you haven't gone behind my back and shifted allegiances. Or if you have, you're an amateur and you're fucking up right before my eyes, but we'll deal with that should the time come. <laughs> You'll find that that is not the case. I certainly hope not. He wanted to make an offer. He is going to go as far as extending my territory to more than I would even like to have. But What a generous... Individual. My thoughts exactly. Goes without saying that I don't exactly see eye to eye with this individual. And you can tell the type of games that I play is very on the surface and business casual. I don't like to do this sort of drivel that he handles. But I didn't think that you would particularly care for it either. I do not. Problematic if he's looking and eyeing venture territory and if you suspect that he's being bankrolled then there's no true way to measure the threat he carries, though he hasn't really made any headway as far as I understand. Do you have any suspicions as to the kind of influence this particular <clears throat> Baron has? I'll look back to Ava and Dakota. Yeah, we have an idea. Well then, 
You come bearing all sorts of fruit. Please. You've m- at least heard of if you have not met Crowley. Yes. I'm here. Crowley has past lives, much like all of us. His past life is still living, flourishing, even though he's not a part of it. As However, he should not be. Exactly. Of course not. A particular Anarch has gone as far as discovering his past life and is using his past life as leverage, holding people that are dear and familial to him so as to gain information as to what might be happening here. Before you continue speaking, Mr. Hopkins, I need to make something incredibly clear. These are all incredibly dangerous threats to be floating around. Don't make it something that'd be easier to kill Crowley off that clean up his messes. We're looking to clean up that mess. Attachments to your past lives can get you killed, Mr. Hopkins. You of all should know. Mr. Jackson, I understand. I understand history lessons, and I know that it repeats itself, and I know that's going to happen time and time again, just as Anarchs continue to try to move in on Camarilla territory, which is why I'm trying to nip this in the bud now before it actually comes to fruition. Likely if he has approached me and he's trying to make an offer, I'm not the only one that he's trying to make an offer to. Bears to reason, certainly. Now I say this, approached us. Not because I particularly care for Crowley. I like things about him, but he doesn't have my heart yet. You know, he's he's not pulling on the heartstrings. That being said, he has value. There is worth in his presence. And he was, if he was worth nothing, then he could be tossed to the side. But there is worth in Crowley. You've been good, Mr. Hopkins. You've made a name for yourself and created a prosperous little bar and a part of town. And you didn't have venture funding to do it. Moreover, you've showed your loyalty to us and our laws time and again. Which is why that these words that you speak to me are forgotten. But if they make their way to other ears, I cannot promise that very same thing. It would be much easier to just rip out the roots and not worry about the buds that come from it than to trim it. If you're understanding my not so subtle metaphor. I understand completely. And this is why I respect our relationship and that I have not shared this with other people. And consider this my motion to show you how much I value our little relationship as well. I think it is safe to say that there is someone older bankrolling the Baron, and I have my suspicions of whom it might be, though I bear no proof, and I am trying to dig it up. My suspicions is that it is a Giovanni on the Anarch Council. Mm, I've heard of him. He very rarely makes an appearance, though. Shouldn't he and Crowley be getting along now? As far as I'm told, the feud should be over. Yeah, I hear that they shake hands with their left, and they hold daggers behind their back on the right. Mm, so, kindred being kindred, nonetheless. Yeah, there's Understood. an grudge there, but... That's only part of the problem. I think that it's something that's going to be dealt with properly and appropriately because Good. I don't like the Anarchs. I don't care for this dickhead, the Baron, as he calls himself. He's a scrub. And he will be snuffed out, I believe, swiftly. But the Anarch, I don't know that much about. I don't know how long he's been in Chicago. I don't know why he's trying to make a move, particularly on this bar, and outward from there to the rest of the Venture territory. Could simply be blind ambition. If he's being bankrolled like you suspect, and he leans in, we've all made our mistakes in funding the wrong person, those who take the money and get more ambitious than they should. Could be something more nefarious, as you may believe. Perhaps he's being used as a honey trap. Bait. Draw someone out. Could be you, could be somebody else. There's varying different reasons and different ways this could all go. The fact that he's a threat, though, That doesn't change no matter the reason. 
whether it is a trap or not, he's going to have to be dealt with, especially if he decides to cross the barriers and make moves on Camarilla territory. They'll deal with him before then. I believe so. I'm not saying this is your problem specifically. Merely laying out the options you might have. This is not a the loud ones. And he puts air quotes on that. It's not one of the loud ones' personal problems. I'm not blaming you on this. Don't. If we deal with it, I was hoping that we might be able to acquire some support. I see. Financial support? We aren't aware as to what we might need just yet, but I would much rather get the ask out there now before it surprises you. Depending on what support you need, I don't see why those who would like to keep their lands securely in their grasp wouldn't help you. Well, just as I told you of Mr. Pink, I also wanted to tell you these machinations before they become afoot. And we appreciate you keeping us informed. It's what allows the Camarilla to flourish. With that on board, I was hoping that you came with some positive news for me. I may. I have many things here, and he snaps. And uh, his little assistant scurries over from, from where he was sitting and uh, scurries over to the private booth. And he hands him a little notebook. He starts flipping through the pages and uh, taking a look and even actually jotting a couple of things down here and there. There seems to be a rather busy... It's been a rather busy month in Chicago, it seems. Crime is at an all-time high. I don't know if anybody said that. Well, crime is at an all-time high in the past 10 years. Seems unrest is settling again. The gangs are moving against one another in all sorts of fashions. I believe you're aware of this. What, what's curious, and he begins to tangent, is that while the city rouses itself, it seems the Second Inquisition hasn't changed their aggression. Usually, if the city begins to speak or wake again in some violent way, then the Second Inquisition seems two steps ahead, and yet now, uh, they seem rather uninterested. Don't you find that interesting? And he begins to flip through the books again. I do. Don't you want to know, or aren't you curious why? I think unrest is something that has developed when things just feel stagnant. And yet... Do you know why? I have my suspicions. And he looks to you and smiles. Oh, my, my apologies. We're, we're going off topic. What is it again that you're looking for? Uh, brought you information on... And he starts flipping the pages. Was it the crime rings? Was it that one you were looking for? Hoping for some of that, yes. Additionally, I was hoping to hear what the council had declared about my ask for the area. Oh, the south area. Right, right, right. Ah, yeah, the yes. block. Oh, your, your, your investment. Oh, my, I thought I sent somebody to clarify that for you already. It may have slipped my mind. They are welcome. And you are welcome to begin invested, investing you. Your loyalty, not over to the, uh, not only to the Ventru, but to the Camarilla over the many years has been something that has not gone forgotten. So, we welcome your funding. I'm excited to see what uh, you do with your newfound investment. I appreciate that. I hope to continue shocking you. It would be interesting to see a block of space begin to flourish, but homeless linger around it like an eyesore. The homeless are a lot less of a problem than everyone believes. They're oh, people that I... are down on their times and they just need someone to invest in them. Just and as I... I'm investing in this block, I'll invest in them. And I don't necessarily disagree. The homeless are like uh, tagged cattle, useful to the right shepherd. But it wouldn't help your goals to gentrify an area but have the dirty riffraff, bringing down property value. One man's trash is another's treasure. I see things a little differently. At least kind. we can agree on some things. Certainly. But time, where some of the money would flow from, from, from into the area, might not be as willing. 
I'm not saying get rid of them right now, Mr. Hopkins. Investing is going to take months, but it's something that you're going to need to think of. You're going to have to fight the Nosferatu in you. I've just learned to embrace many things, Mr. Jackson. Some things are fact. That even if I fight the homeless, they will still exist. Why not welcome them and treat them as they wish to be treated, but give them an opportunity? Some people just need a chance. You took a chance, and look how that paid off. Well, I appreciate what you've become, Mr. Hopkins. With all due respect, you were forced upon us. Yeah. You're right. We were. We are just absolutely thrust. It worked out. That I will agree with you on. Incredibly well. I am not here to tell you how to run your city block. We will, of course, be watching, but it's your money. Do with as you will. The families. Tell me about the crime families. There are many. The prominent ones. The triads, the Russians, and the mafia would be the big three. Triads, the weakest of the three, bottom of the food chain right now. Struggling, have been, for a few years. Russians been running things down south for... Well, since the four of you even, or should, sorry, the, since the three of you were even brought into our little world. But now all empires fall. Mortal ones just fall a little faster than ours. And he chuckles. The Russians have been spreading themselves too thin, too ambitious. It's opened up a few chinks in their armor. The Mafia and the Triads have been moving in. Might explain why the Mafia have feeding the Triads some weapons in this bar recently, I've heard. You would have heard correctly. Impressive. It was handled smoothly. But a small gust of wind in the right direction with a little rain and thunder, and the triads might not exist anymore. They're on their last legs. Okay. That is good to know. The Russians. Mafia. Sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt you. And the Russians. What about them? What do you know about their families? Ah. I got sidetracked. My apologies. Every one of them that has a missing person belongs to somebody uh, higher up on the Russian criminal food chain five families that I've been able to uh, what's the word verify have been hit and he actually rips out a piece of uh, the page in his notebook and he folds it and just slides it across the table thank you favors done and favors owed we've had a very very mutual and beneficial relationship I'd like to keep that continuing if you don't mind Likewise. I have no personal stake in either the Russians nor the triads. What you do with them is none of my concern as long as you maintain the masquerade. It is of utmost importance. Good. I would like to see something though, Mr. Jackson. I want to say a word and I want to see where it lands with you. What do you know about Emmy? What about her? It's a name I recently heard, and I'd like to know about her. She's lucky she's alive. Heard something bad happened. Yeah. I never got any of the details, though. Not that it's any of my business. It isn't. Venture business before your time. So I see that she's not exactly well-liked. I only reiterate. She's lucky that she's still alive. 
by my count, she should have been dead twice over. Why? That's I not was a told. Name. I was told today that there is another party that is interested in Brighton Park. And I, I know she's nothing. making moves. Then I know nothing about her. I just know that her name is Emmy, and that she's a Ventru. She's not in favor of the rest of the. She's Ventru. eight years fucking old. At least the body of one. She's been around for a couple decades, though. Dangerous little bitch. Yeah, how so? Ambitious for an eight-year-old. Sees everything as a game. Doesn't understand. There's a reason. Children are not sired. Though by the grace of the prince that came before, she wasn't killed. I just wanted to see what the shakedown was on her. I figured if anyone was going to give me a candid and honest response, it would be Mr. Jackson. Appreciate you letting me know. Keep your eye on her. If anything comes of it, I'll be sure to report in and let you know. But we're still looking for Brighton Park for ourselves, particularly for Dakota. Understood. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I'll walk you to the door. Dakota gets up. It's only Fly appropriate. Out. And he gets up as well. I, I'll walk him to the door. Oh, yeah. Mr. Jackson, a pleasure as always. He reaches down and pulls your hand up. And you, Miss Heloise. If you find yourself in downtown... I'd be happy to show you some of the new clubs. Uh, can I get a wits awareness from Ava specifically? Uh, wits awareness. Yes. Okay. Two. You okay. see him do it. You see him. You catch him do it just for a moment. But after he kisses your hand, you actually get goes, ooh. And he actually touches himself. And is like a little vitae. Maybe you are regrowing your thorns. But you saw him bite his lip very quickly to pierce a little bit of the... What a cute little pickup. And he turns and he walks with Dakota out to the I thought you were going to say, what a cute little creeper. Hates <laughs> their own. Um, as he goes, uh, I'll just say, Mr. Jackson, I am not a gangrel of many words, but well, yours start. tonight sparked my interest. Shall we walk? The interest and safety of this city is of import to me. And I'm interested to know why you feel it is not as safe as it once was. Then we should walk. Dakota's not stopping. Yep, and he walks. And you guys walk down an alley and you walk for maybe a few blocks before he begins to talk. You don't feel it, do you? The change in the air. I have instincts. There is some unrest. However you are, Magnus Canis. Ah, this is true. You are the prince's favorite hound. Though not everyone's. But the prince's, nonetheless. Possibly, one might say. Hmm. And the prince's favorite hound wants to know what's going on in Chicago so she can keep the prince informed. That's not what I asked. No, I'm merely inferring your duties as a hound is. My duty is to the Camarilla and the city. He openly grins.
The world always shifts, Miss Dakota. And while there are those who sit on the throne and are comfortable in it, the throne was only crafted for one, suited for one. And its true leader will eventually sit back in the throne that it owns. For now, the throne is being kept warm. And she does her job well enough. The question is, when is well enough? Not going to be enough anymore. In Chicago, seems like it's on the tipping point of being too much for our dear prince. Say your opinions are more like facts. Then I wouldn't be surprised. Thank you for your candor. Anything for the Camarilla. Its structure and its laws are the reason you and I walk these streets freely so tonight. I know this. As do I. If something were to get in the way of that. Well, then I would do everything in my power to make sure we remove that obstacle. I like you, Mr. Jackson. That doesn't happen a lot. He smiles. I do have this bizarre charm about me. Maybe it's my money. I doubt it. He, 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 uh, he smiles at that, looks to his, uh, his, uh, associate. Call our ride. We have places to be. Miss Dakota, I'm sure your coterie is missing you. Yes, of course. And thank you again for securing the land for Ollie. When the Baron learned... pranced into his bar, we felt it necessary to share. While our gift of land was certainly a kind gesture to Ollie. I would be remiss to say he didn't at least try to earn it first. Ollie earns everything he's ever gotten. I'm starting to realize he's no common Nosferatu. Then we share the same opinion. He nods. Until the next time we meet, Miss Rain. Until the next time. And he walks around a, a building. And you can even follow him. He doesn't go invisible in a car. Yeah, no, I don't up. need to follow him. Yep, exactly. You can hear a car door open and shut and an engine rev off as you head back to the bar. When, as we watch Dakota walk, the camera will pull up and it'll go south into the park by the church, catching up with Crowley as he shuts his van door and walks into the church where Needles is not actively hiding actually at all. He's just uh, cleaning up, it looks like. He's picking up little garbage that's lying around, bags that, that are left during the day as people come in and eat. And he's just picking it all up, throwing it in a bag as you walk in. Yo, Needles. Oh, oh, hey, uh, Crowley. I wasn't expecting you tonight. Uh, I actually mean to find someone. I need to talk to Emmy. Why? And he kind of tries to roll it off as like natural, but it's awkward and obviously not. He's about uh, as good a liar as you are. Um, Well, quite frankly, it's because uh, some of the cut you want to talk to her. Apparently, something related to what's going on. Plus, oh, she's okay. interested in fucking the Baron over or something. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, she might be fucking the Baron over. Great. We should work together. Actually, that might be a great idea. Well, yeah. uh, I've Ooh. been to your bar. I can send her there next time I see her. Great. No, that's easy. Oh, that's... Why didn't I think of that? I mean... And he kind of goes back to picking things up. If I could find her now, that would be great. You know me, I'm straight sure. I'm he, not, like, trying to fuck her over or anything. He stands up. It's like, oh, yeah, no, I... I I mean, I would if I knew where she was. That's fair. She not just kind of like that. I, she actually doesn't really have a schedule either. So, like, I don't know when... She could be here tonight. She could be here tomorrow night. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. A lack of mobile phones is a bit of a pain. Yeah, I mean, you're welcome to hang out tonight if you want. I don't know. I don't know. And he kind of goes. I would love to, but unfortunately, I have to find someone dear to me, and I'm on a little bit of a timer. That's fair. Well, good luck. But we should hang out sometime. Totally down for that. 
That would be, he's like, you know, that would be a lot of fun. Cool. Um, should you see this guy called Tank? Good fella. Yeah, I don't know. Sounds like a good gummy. Is it? Have you seen The Matrix? Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course I've seen The Matrix. Yeah, cool character. Which one's Tank? Oh, God, it's been a while. Uh, he's like the operator. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like him. I think he'd need more screen time, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Spent too much ah. time with the blonde dude. Anyway, uh, yeah, I better run. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, no problem. I should give these back to you, but if there's an emergency situation, it'd be handy if I can hang on to them. He actually does contemplate when you hold the rosary out uh, to to him, and he's uh, well. If it lets you talk to him, take him. If it lets you talk to my brother. Thank you. It means a lot. I will. I will send her uh, to the bar if need be. Is she going to be allowed in the bar? Actually, now that I think about it. I'm pretty sure that Ollie won't give a damn. Okay. Although I'll I might have to it. tell the guy behind the bar to look out for an eight-year-old coming in being bullshy. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll let her know. Yeah. Out of interest, do you know what happened between her and the Ventru? Did something happen between her and them? I... Crowley, I've, I've, I've only been around for like... a year like this. Oh. Sorry. Thanks, man. Yeah. No, no, or she's, uh, you know, she's been coming in kind of sim, sim, like I said, I, I'm surprised I didn't think about it. It's just, she's interested in, in making sure the Baron leaves me alone and. Odd motivation for an eight year old. Well, she's like us, so it's not quite the same, I don't think. I don't know. Is that not how it works? Is she eight still? She told me she was like almost 40 or something. I don't know. Well, she's like eight or something in the head. Oh, that's how, oh, that, oh. Like your brain oh, doesn't poor, develop or something. That poor girl. Yeah. Never getting a chance to grow up must be pretty fucking rough. Damn. Oh uh, yeah, I'll send her. Sorry, I'm not more useful tonight. And he looks to you like, I'm sorry. Hey. Dude, I don't come to you because you're useful. Uh, also, uh, reminds me, while I'm here, he pulls that tape measure and he just measures some of like the broken door hinges. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Right. There we go. You just start nodding. Oh, you can fix that stuff? Uh, I can't. I'm not good with my hands like that. I could probably just about fix it, put it that way. Never was my job, but fix the old things around the house. Sure. Ah, oh, Crowley. Man, you're like my guardian angel coming out of nowhere. You know that? You come in a time I need, you know, I'm, I'm being bullied and you're here. And then you tell me you can, like, talk to my brother. And, like, you can be him and I can talk to him. And you're going to fix this place up? I'll do what I can. I can't promise anything. This. Maybe, man, maybe. And he looks back to, the like, the altar. Maybe not all of it's bullshit. Some's bullshit, some's not. The important yeah. part is what you do with your life. Well, thank, thanks, Crowley. Uh, I, I mean it. Thank you. It, it's been the best, like, few nights of my life. Lately, anyway. You know, before everything. After everything. Yeah. Ah, well, uh, anyway. Uh, Crowley, thank you. Uh, you're Like I said, you're welcome to hang out, but you said you got business to tend to, and I just need to I need um, pick up the rest of the garbage. Sure. If anything goes, you know... Square feet or sideways, you got any in, anything to hang out about, any interesting info. And otherwise I will definitely hang out and it won't be business related at some point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, you're like you're like you're kinda like a I mean you're like, kinda like a friend. You're like, yeah, I don't really have many kindred friends and you've been really nice, so I appreciate it. I'm not saying we're friends, don't worry. I'm just saying you know, it's been like the closest thing I've had to a friend in a while. No, dude, don't worry, I get it. It's nice to be able to let your guard down when everyone's out to fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. And I promise I won't draw dicks in the back of your pews. <laughs> he laughs. Thanks. Uh, uh, well, have a good night, Crowley. I fist bump him. And he fist bumps you back. And I leave. And you head out. He's so dead. <laughs> and as Crowley, like, mumbles to himself, fuck, he's so dead. <laughs> uh, we will pan out.
Yeah, that was definitely me it mentioning it to myself. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It was, I know it was you, but it was just funny, funny image in my head. And we'll fade out, and we'll pick up in a couple weeks from here. Yep, four needles. No, not four <laughs> needles. I like. No, we say that about Grant on my own. You know what? We have our favorites, but we have to protect them. <laughs> and if Grant, if I ever kill off Grant, I don't know if I won't be able to cry during that. <laughs> <No. laughs> Uh, hey, look, if Grant dies, it's quite likely I can just channel Grant. And it's true, you could just channel Yeah. Grant. Yeah. And then we <sighs> can have Grant join us in combat as well. I can just have Grant ride along. <laughs> I don't I don't know if, if, if Ava's ready for that. That's just like, uh, that's double the boner. Ava, look, yeah. that, <laughs> it's going to be a threesome. Grant's going to be there. Is that cool? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, and thank you for watching, everybody. I'm going to hide under my desk. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with that said, uh, we're going to go over many announcements that we have. Um, do, 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 do. Looking up the announcements. Look, Grant's going to be inside me. And anyway. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> if I keep digging, I get to go to Australia. That's how this works, right? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so there's no support today. Monthly recap is out for those of you on the Patreon, the correct tier and above. Uh, Public World Dawn of the Other starts tomorrow with Margaret Crone GMing, Bentham Plays, Kieran Nancy, Nika Harper, and Adderosa Gaming uh, being the uh, the players. Uh, and that'll be running for 12 weeks. The character creation video for Dawn of the Others is already out. You can go check that out. Uh, final sheets and GM notes of Revale High are coming out very soon. And of course, uh, next week and the week after, because there is no VTM, uh, there is a two shots short of the captain's table uh, a good society rpg set on a boat uh which uh trooper is going to be jamming which i'm super hyped about i'm really looking forward to that um so uh that's uh it's gonna be fun there'll be announcements about the cast for that tomorrow so you can go check that out on uh, dawn of the others and also on the twitters uh that's all the announcements i think done so let's start off with uh speaking of being inside people's heads uh mathis it's me. I'm in all your heads all the time. Hello, I'm Mathis. You can find me at Mathis Games pretty much everywhere. Twitch, YouTube, all that good stuff. Uh, Chiluminati podcast is weekly now. And if you like Chiluminati, you can go listen to that. We, we release an episode every single week. Uh, and then I'm here, obviously, on Saturdays. I, I run a Star Wars game on Wednesdays. I lost initiative show on Twitch. Is that everything? That's everything. I think that's it. Which is it for me. Sweet. Okay. Um... What about uh, Ava Hello is Ms. Magitech Tracy? Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Tracy, Miss Magitech. You can find me all the places, Miss Magitech. Um, I play games on stream and make YouTube videos, things like that. Um, yeah, that that's me, basically. I'm playing through VTM Bloodlines right now on stream, almost done. So it's been fun. Toriador's rule. Hey. <laughs> See you guys in a few weeks. <laughs> I, think, I think the Ventru would have something to say about that. <laughs> uh, what about Dakota Rain, Little Red Dot? Red Dot! You found me online, playing games, rolling dice, telling stories. Uh, I kick up a new campaign on Wednesday, so that's very cool. I'm using the new Overlight system by Renegade Games. Pretty stoked about it. A little, little psychedelic fantasy, little, little obscure uh, storytelling. So yeah, come on over. Ooh. And yep. of course, Other than that, now I'm just twiddling my thumbs till two weeks. Saturdays are gone. Two Same. Two weeks. You know what? Saturday I'm going to use these two weeks to get all that writing caught up that I need to send Bub nice. from Dakota's Dakota's uh, <laughs> journal. I started it, but I haven't finished it. So that, you know what? Now I'm busy again. See you all in two weeks. <laughs> That's good. Perfect. Okay, speaking of getting uh, a load from Dakota, uh, Ollie, Bubba, not Bub, what about you? That didn't... didn't... Let's, Your segue let's is... Try that again, E. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of getting a lot of writing, Ollie, what about you, who will be on the receiving end of the lots of writing? Bub? Bubba, not Bub? Bub? Bubba, dub? Sure, this is fine. Perfect. You, you were so good at this. The oh, Daddy of the Country, please that. tell I, uh, me about yourself. Hi guys, it's me, Bub. Uh, you guys probably all know me. If you haven't made your way over to my stream, I do things over there at twitch.tv forward slash the Bub or not. I've uh, been doing lots of gaming. I started some Divinity 1 last night with uh, one of our locals, and I am pushing to put Darkest Dungeon behind me. This is the year about 
finding the games that all take 80 hours and completing them each. So I feel that. Yeah. 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 Right. It took so, me, uh, yeah, like three months to finish Divinity on stream. So. But it's such a fucking good game, though. Yeah. Man. So good. So yeah. that's what we're doing. Um, I'm still trying to solidify some of my uh, my final writings on my BTM game. And I've started writing my Deadlands game, uh, which is, oh, God, I have a title for it. I can't seem to remember it. Um, I, it's called uh, the, the game is called Red Hands Black Deeds. Um, so I'm stoked for it. Uh, Deadlands is going to be a lot of fun. And as you guys know, I, I still do a lot of Pathfinder on my channel. So come watch Shackled City, which is closing in on 200 sessions live. And um, Mommy's Mask, whenever we can cycle through and everyone's schedule works out, because right now is a weird time. And I hope everybody's safe and healthy. Um, but outside of me, uh, EE, what about you, boss? What are you doing? Uh, okay. Um, speaking of putting big things behind us, uh, hi, I'm Andrew Lissim. You can find me over at youtube.com forward slash... Uh, Tracy, Tracy smiled. I just... It's I, the Torridor yeah. mindset right there. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Andrew Elysium from youtube.com forward slash Andrew Elysium. I'm currently playing Stellaris, Hearts of Iron, um, and of course, Bannerlord as Thrayer, our Nordic warrior woman, with some mods, which is great because they actually fix the game and make some of the things that are broken work. Uh, and I'll be starting an Aurora 4X playthrough soon, just waiting for it to stabilize. And it looks like three patches came up while we were streaming. So I know what I'll be recording tonight. Dwarf Fortress in space. <sighs> they nerf missiles. It makes me sad. Anyway, um, that's the thing. Also, twitch.tv forward slash and Relysium Tuesdays, we have a comedy RP show called uh, Chaos Lost. It's a Black Crusade uh, 40k thing, which is just weird. Uh, and then on Thursdays, I stream. And uh, that's it. That's it. That's that's the things. Right. Okay. Um, we're going to go put large things behind us and do an after show. So um, thank Bye. you, everyone. And uh, may the dice roll over in your favor. Bye, guys. See you in two weeks.